Voting is how you make your voice heard. Cool, I'm gonna use my voice to say I'm not gonna vote for Biden unless he calls for a ceasefire. No, but if you don't vote for Biden, Trump will win and then bad things will happen. The bad things are already happening. That's why I'm saying I'm not gonna vote for him unless he calls for a ceasefire. But if you don't vote for him, Trump will win. So then I guess he should call for a ceasefire. He's not gonna call for a ceasefire though. So I guess I'm not gonna vote for him. But if you don't vote for him, Trump will win. And if he doesn't want Trump to win, he should call for a ceasefire. Do you think things will be easier under Trump? No, I don't. But do you think the work for collective liberation stops because there's a Democrat in office? But Biden supports good policies like free healthcare, free college, and affordable housing. Do we have any of those things? No, but we could. That's why it's so important to make your voice heard. Okay, how do I make my voice heard? Mm. Do you know what that tastes like? Like a company that doesn't support genocide. It's been a month since October 7th. 31 days. And in those 31 days, 10,000 Palestinians have been massacred as the land has been brutally and indiscriminately bombed. That number is probably incredibly underrepresentative of just what the death toll is. And regardless, it's going to climb as people are still trapped under the rubble, as people are still dying from disease and sickness, and as Israel continues its relentless attacks. 10,000 people from a place this big in a country this large. 10,000. Along the way, Israel has cut off access to food, water, fuel, humanitarian aid, the internet, and electricity, pretty much at free will. Palestinians who were in Israel working on October 7th have since been detained and tagged with these little numbers here. Overnight, regular, everyday civilians became our eyes and ears on the ground as they've tried to humanize their communities, having herodom thrust upon them. And as a result, Israel has labeled them terrorist as justification for getting them killed in targeted attacks with the other dozens of journalists who have already died. We've seen surgeries take place on hospital floors with next to no anesthesia. We've seen people break down as they find out the devastating news that their loved ones have been killed or worse, they hold up the bodies or body parts as they call for humanity and a ceasefire. We have read people's last goodbye messages as their entire bloodlines have been since wiped from the earth. And all of this has happened in 31 days. If this does not outrage you, if this does not move you more than the uncorroborated and unverified story of 40 beheaded babies, maybe it's not about the babies, maybe it's not about the humanity, maybe it's something deeper. This is what you should know about Queer Palestinians Part 2. They were asked to find Palestinians that are members of the LGBTQ community mm -hmm. so that we can pressure them. Pinkwashing by the Israeli government comes in many forms, but a lot of people have a hard time believing specifically this one method. That's why I've met with an ex-IDF soldier who's now part of breaking the silence. The fact that the Palestinian man is a gay man that doesn't want everybody to know that he's a gay man, and yeah. we are taking him out of the closet unless he, he would walk with us. Yeah, and, and, and when you say walk with us, you mean be, a, be an informant? Yes, yes, be an informant. They are forced to cooperate in different things. One. Tell us about where they hide things, who, we, who went to a protest, who said this or that thing. Two. As a soldier, we did operations. The Secret Service came with us with a Palestinian man that he pointed at houses and said, over there there is a girl. Over, and he's really? inside a car yeah. and he's pointing at houses and then you, you, we raid inside, we search, we take everything. We are using, you know, we are using pink washing, mm -hmm. right? The gay parade in Tel Aviv and in Haifa and Jerusalem, we are a liberal state, we are a democratic state and all of that. But we are doing 180 degrees different over here in the West Bank. Now let's repeat that. We are a liberal state, we are a democratic state and all of that. But we are doing 180 degrees different over here in the West Bank. Let's repeat that one more time for my people in the back. We are a liberal state, we are a democratic state and all of that. But we are doing 180 degrees different over here in the West Bank. Thank you. For Palestinians, food is one of the ways to preserve our heritage. Today, I'm making Palestinian couscous, or what we call maftul. Maftul is a traditional Palestinian dish that has been passed on from generation to generation. It's bulgur in whole wheat flour rolled by hand into small balls and dried in the sun. I got this maftul with me straight from Palestine. It's handmade and rolled by Palestinian women. Whenever you see any packed goods like this, just know it's made with love. Seasoning my maftul. Seasoning some olive oil and half of my chickpeas. And I'm gonna mix it all together. I'm gonna start layering. I'm gonna add some olive oil, my tomatoes, my jalapenos, and my chickpeas. 
my carrots, my fried eggplant, my sauteed and boiled chicken. Lastly, adding my seasoned mustard. Adding my tomato paste to my chicken broth. Make sure you dissolve your tomato paste. Make sure the water is at the same level as the maftool and cover. Leaving a little liquid so the maftool won't absorb all the water, so that way it won't be dry. This is a dish that brings people together and is usually eaten during the winter time as a comfort food. Very good. Please continue to pray for Gaza and the Palestinians and anybody that's affected by it. I'm not going to be saying Bushahi today due to what's going on in my country. Free Palestine. In the next 10 seconds of this video, if you don't get mad as hell, I really don't know what to do about you because you might be inept as a human. Anyway, roll the clip. There's no way you can watch that video and try to justify what Israel is doing. It's not a war. It's not. It's a fucking massacre of the Palestinian people. And not only that, it's trickling down into TikTok trends, encouraging children to be racist and um, fucking bigots to the Palestinian people. This is absolutely insane and we are in fucking danger as a human fucking species. I cannot stress this enough. I need you guys to share and do it and blow up this video. Send it to Instagram outside of TikTok as well, okay? Because I've made this video and TikTok took it down. Let me show you guys what's happening in Egypt right now. You guys see all these trucks? This is humanitarian aid. Egypt has been holding aid, food, and everything that Palestinian needs at their border for, for Israel to open the doors for them to go and help the Palestinians. And Israel has not opened the door. It's been days. And they promised to open the doors today, and they haven't. Look, look at all these trucks. This is aid from international. Everyone online has been donating money for, to help the people of Palestine and Gaza. Look at this. This is everybody's aid and everybody's donations that um, uh, Egyptians have prepared into this truck to help Palestinians. And Israel refused to open the doors for them to go and help the Palestinians. Look, the Egyptians are actually, they were sleeping there for days. They have been camping, they have been lying on the floor, waiting, waiting for the doors to open to help the Palestinians. Look, this is, this is what's happening. This is what Israel is doing. Because they refused to open the doors, now Egyptians started protesting. And even the leaders of, uh, of Egypt have told the people to go out and protest. Because, look, they have literally told Israel, open the doors, they said no. People are protesting. This is outrageous. You don't want these people to leave the, uh, Palestine so that it can be refugees around the world and be protected. You don't want them to leave. You want to bomb and kill these people. And secondly, you don't want no one to help them, no one to give them food and water. What is wrong with is uh, uh, the Israeli people? I, I, ah! Uh, uh, this is wickedness. This is evil. These people are demonic. People have to literally protest for you to open a door. For, to help people that are in need, that you are killing and bombing. You, Israel is a terrorist uh, country. It's a terrorist government. And I, I cannot believe this. So I need you guys to share this video. Blow it up, send it to Instagram and above. Because they're, they're trying to silence, uh, silence me and every other creator. So you guys b make this video go viral and send it outside of TikTok as well. Like share it so that if, if, if anything happens, at least it's... The message is out there. This is what they're doing. They don't want to let any hate help for Palestinians to come in. Israel is the worst of the worst. Demo demonic people. I don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. Clap if you feel, feel safe. <laughs> oh. No one. <laughs> well. Uh, real quick, a lot of Zionists are still using the talking point of like why black people aren't standing with Zionists and how like they stood with us in 2020 and blah, blah, blah. They did the donating, da, da, da. And what is fascinating is after the creation of you know, Israel in 1948, um, Moving forward, a lot of the Jewish people that stood with black liberation in the United States, they were also anti-Zionist. 
But the real kicker is if you were to open those books that you bought up in 2020, if you would have cracked a, a, a spine on the Mark Lamont Hill and the Angela Davis and the ta Codis and the several um, uh, Black liberationist authors, you would have found and very distinctly read a thorough explanation from several points of view, from several members of the diaspora as to why Black people consistently stand with Palestine and also why Jewish people consistently stand with Palestine. Check out this video. You don't want to do your own research, that's fine. But Nelson Mandela said, we know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. One of the mistakes which uh, some political analysts make is to think that their enemies should be our enemies. Our attitude towards any country is determined by the attitude of that country to our struggle. As police reprisals escalated in Ferguson, Palestinians took to social media to show solidarity with black communities as well as sharing protest tactics. And we started getting tweets from Ramola and they were like, run toward the wind. You know, stand closer to the soldiers because if you stand close to the soldiers, they won't tear gas you because then they get tear gas. Yeah. You know, wrap this shirt around your eyes as a kind of makeshift gas mask. And they, they had been protesting in the West Bank against what was happening in Gaza. We identify with the PLO because just like ourselves, they are fighting for the right of self-determination. <laughs> we have many members of the Jewish community in our struggle, and they have occupied very top positions. But that does not mean to say that uh, the enemies of Israel are our enemies. We refuse to take that position. You can call it being political or uh, a moral question, but uh, for anybody who changes his principles depending on whom he is dealing, that is not a man who can lead a nation. A statue of Mandela stands in the occupied West Bank city of Ramallah, a gift from South Africa to the people of Palestine. In his honor, let us not forget the last colony of Africa, Western Sahara. Let us fight to free Western Sahara from oppression. Let us also remember that Majima said our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of Palestine. Therefore, we stand together to fight for the liberation of Palestine. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! From the river to the sea! So the UN knows what this is. They knew it was early as the 14th. The president of Colombia sees what it is. A whole Holocaust scholar who is Israeli can tell you what it is. But the rest of the world can't. And just notice for my people up in Gaza and Ramallah and this free Palestine until it's backwards, motherfucker. This video will include important information about what you can do to support Palestine and what you can do to um, push the ceasefire now resolution. So share um, to as many people as you can, comment, um, questions, and please pass this message along. Yesterday, I went to the Capitol with AJP Action for Palestinian Advocacy Day. Um, we had this day scheduled for like a month or two prior, so we had to kind of change our agenda to um, talk about the urgency and the importance of a ceasefire as soon as possible um, in Gaza. So we had meetings all day yesterday, Tuesday, October 24th, um, with senators and House representatives to ask them to support House Resolution 786 information and oppose House Resolution 768, a very similar numbers, but significantly different information. If we were speaking to our senators and not House reps, we would ask them to introduce something to the Senate that is similar to 786, which is calling, supporting the cease, introducing something like the ceasefire now. 
Act. I spoke with my two senators from Pennsylvania, urged them that we are your constituents and we make up, we represent thousands of people in your districts and in your state um, and that we are voters. And if you do not po- um, support the ceasefire now resolution as soon as possible, you will receive pushback and bombardment and we are voters. I met with House Representative Summer Lee, um, the She's a Pennsylvanian House representative of Pittsburgh. She is a a co-sponsor of House Resolution 786, the Ceasefire Now Act, so we went to thank her. This is Representative Delia Ramirez. She is also co-leading the the House Resolution, and so we also went to thank her as well. Um, There's only like 17 people who are co-sponsoring the 786, which is a very small number compared to people, representatives that are co-leading 768. So what I'm saying in this video is... See if your representative is supporting 786. And if they're not, urge them to support 786 for a ceasefire now act. Guys, this is so urgent. This is so important because every day we don't have a ceasefire. Hundreds of more Palestinians are being murdered and displaced. So please call them, email them every day. And I talk to these representatives they're saying that's what works. So please, instead of thoughts and prayers, because we need action. We don't want no more thoughts and prayers. We need action now. Because some of your reps outside their doors have these on it. Basically, they stand with um, genocide. So this is Michael Waltz from Florida. Also, this is Robert Alderho. I don't know if I pronounced that wrong. Also, don't care. Um, from Alabama. So yeah, um, urgent, please. Really quickly, I just need a moment of your time. Please don't scroll past this video. This is about a really close friend of mine. A local organizer and a dear, dear friend of mine was arrested earlier today in Orlando, Florida for protesting in solidarity with Palestinians. They haven't been booked yet. We haven't had any updates. So right now I'm trying to collect funds along with Florida Palestine Network to maybe, um, I can't talk, um, to maybe um, pay their bail. So if you guys could, if you are able to, Please donate. If you're not, that is fine. Just help me boost this video, repost, share. For those of y'all who can't donate but want to support in other ways, you can call. And there's a script that Florida Palestine Network has provided for people to use so that way they can get in touch with the police department. For those of y'all who would like to donate or can donate, this is the cash up in the Venmo above that is receiving funds on behalf of my friend. If you have any questions, concerns, please drop them in the comments. I will try my best to answer them, or if I need, if need be, I will reach out to Florida Palestine Network and get clarification. Decolonize your mind. I'm sorry, I have to fucking laugh. I have to fucking laugh because, like, you guys love to decolonize this, decolonize that, decolonize, decolonize. Actually, guys, colonizers, and then you'll be supporting Israel. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Brown people, I'm talking to you, especially you fashy sympathizers. Um, decolonization is not wearing fucking kurtas and jumkas to work. And correcting people when they say chai tea and uh, getting upset over yoga. Uh, decolonization means actively not supporting colonization. <laughs> Some of you have been acting really surprised. It's free Palestine all day, every day around these parts. So what part of my content would give you any sort of indication that I wouldn't be pro-Palestine? while you were sleeping, Israel intensified its bombing campaign in an attempt to silence the people of Gaza. Here's how we're gonna fight back using the search feature. I'll try to keep this under three minutes. If you wanna watch it in 2X, click here. Make sure you like, save, repost, and share. Similar to most search engines such as Google, TikTok, and other platforms utilize keywords and hashtags to curate recommendations for your For You page. Now, let me set the record completely straight on hashtags. How you hashtag on TikTok is different than how you hashtag on other platforms. For example, IG does only recommend three to five hashtags in their caption. Whereas TikTok doesn't really give us an indicated number of hashtags that you could utilize. Now, if you have an ad account in TikTok, you can go to the Creative Center and sign in and you actually can see what the top trending hashtags are. Now, some best practices for hashtags is you want to make sure that you keep them as relevant as possible. 
You also want to pay attention to what the trend is because what's going to happen with the ranking system is TikTok is going to pull the hashtag with the highest ranking and then apply that to the top of the search screen. Now, here's the kicker. You could actually use no hashtags and still be able to rank. With the help of artificial intelligence, both TikTok and IG have the ability to read your caption and then pull keywords from that caption. Now, because of the special circumstance, I actually would recommend doing both. I think because people think that people don't actually read the captions, they don't typically put a long caption on platforms like TikTok, but absolutely put a caption with a lot of good keywords on there because it does help with the search. Another great way to increase our ranking is collaboration. Platforms like TikTok and IG actually reward collaboration, which actually helps with ranking. So if you're scrolling and you see a creator that is talking about some of the same things that you're talking about, send them a message, link up with them, and then you guys get together and collaborate on something that you could create that you could actually tag them on, which will help with the search. I'm almost done. I'm trying not to overwhelm you. When it comes to the search screen for TikTok and the explore page for IG visuals are what's going to capture those that are searching for content. So make sure that you are including thumbnails on your content. I'm notorious for not doing this, but I'm gonna get better. The thought behind it is that catchy thumbnails will encourage people to click on your content. And again, AI can actually read the words on the thumbnail, which will help with categorizing you. Now, if you're wondering why is all of this important, I'll explain it to you. Keeping the topic of Palestine at the top of the ranking, again, puts pressure on people to take action, which is what the people of Palestine need now more than anything, is people taking action to stop this genocide. I know you're getting tired. I know you're frustrated. I know that you have responsibilities, which is why I'm breaking these concepts down pretty simply because they're very small things that you could do that make a big impact. So continue to share, continue to be engaged. I promise you it's working. And as usual, free Palestine. We have an update on the boycott. BDS has put out a new furrow list of companies to boycott. The boycotting has been very challenging and confusing to many. A lot of us were immediately on the list of making people who were showing support to Israel during those first few weeks who have outlay giving money and funds to Israel like Disney, McDonald's and Starbucks. Starbucks specifically, they were censoring people who were supporting Palestinians. And everybody wanted to do the equal part in whatever community they were in to just sever any ties to any monetary gains that were going towards Israel, whether they had investors who you know, basically were based in Israel and that money made sure directly to the IDF or the IOF. A lot of people focus on those who have branches, who have offices in Israel, who are founded in Israel, who are based in Israel. Many of us were not aware of the BDS movement that has been around for almost 20 years, since 2005. And a lot of us thought that if we divert any funding of monetary gains towards Israel, that we were going to do something. But as we made the list, a lot of it just became of a, okay, this may not be the full impact that we think it is. Now, I cannot tell somebody how to individually, you know, boycott who they want to support versus who they don't want to. That's an individual. But it's uber important for us to focus on the BDS movement and who they say to boycott. They also made a specific list on how to boycott, who should boycott. So this is the official list of companies to boycott. They already divided them into different sections. Now, consumer boycotts target a complete boycott of brands carefully selected due to their proven record of complacency in Israel's apartheid. These are the targets of consumer boycotts, you know, Puma being a big one. I know everybody's happy about the Rihanna shoes. We're not buying them. If you already bought them, it's okay. You can keep them. Just don't buy anymore. HP is another one. I know Christmas is coming up. Do not get any of their products. Same with Shoulder Stream, Siemens, um, Remax, Avada, Careflower, AXA. Also boycott any goods made in Israel. Now, the second one is divestment boycotts. This is pressuring governments, institutions, and investment funds. This is strictly a corporation boycott. These are the lists right here. Cat, Chevron, Barclays, Volvo, LB Systems, all them. We then have the pressure targets. These are non-boycotts, but these are actively calling for pressure campaigns against these brands and services due to their complacency in the apartheid. They haven't called on a Ford boycott yet, they ask instead to call on supporters and institutions to mount other forms of pressure on them until they end their complacency in Israel's apartheid. 
Now, these are the non-pressure targets. Google, Amazon, Airbnb, Booking.com, Disney, Expedia. They're not telling you to stop using them, but they're asking you to apply pressure to these companies to stop in their complacency with Israel's apartheid on Palestine. Now, the fourth one that's really important and ties into what we you know, originally started, organic boycott targets. They did not initiate it, but they support them due to their you know, involvement and support of the genocide happening in Palestine. A lot of them are a lot of restaurants, Domino's, Papa John's, Pizza Hut, McDonald's, Burger King, Wix. They have been providing food to the IOF soldiers. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be asking, well, what about Starbucks? BDS has said that they do support us boycotting Starbucks. Also, Starbucks has been needing a boycott because of how to trade their labor union workers. And there's already a protest set for Red Cup Day. Again, context sensitivity is a key principle of this movement. There is a limited human capacity when regards to boycotting and achieving meaningful impact. So going forward, when it comes to boycotting, focus on the list given by BDS. Bissan is missing. If you don't know Bissan, she is a Palestini journalist. Normally, she posts multiple times a day on her story to let people know what is going on and to give live updates. However, this was her last story saying that the Israeli army is one to two kilometers away from her. For 14 hours, she has been radio silent. And this is extremely worrisome because within the last week, she talked about how she was able to narrowly dodge missile strikes. I'm holding hope that she is alive and well and that perhaps she has had her internet service cut off. So with that said, I want to direct you to Chasa Isim. This allows you to buy electronic sims for people in Chasa. This is all run by me if you want to confirm that the eSIMs are reaching the people that need it. These are being distributed to journalists and other people in need. Here are where to purchase those sims and here is how to send those sims to be donated to people in Chasa. Plans start for as little as $8. Once purchased, you can take the QR code and send it to this email and you will get a confirmation that the code has been used. And if you're curious as to how you can keep up with the two leaders of this effort, they are posting updates to show you how these are being utilized. Interns here, uh, she said that you make music for gays. I do. Everybody, so create. Y'all know when you say I still need to educate myself on stuff that you actually got to go do that, right? Like, you can't just be like, oh, I don't know enough, so I'm not going to say anything and then move on with your life and pretend like it doesn't exist. I mean, I guess you can, but at that point, maybe it's time to admit to yourself and to everyone that it's not a matter of you not knowing enough. It's that you don't care enough to know. And if you are able to not care enough to know about things like a genocide, maybe it's time to examine why that is and also examine the privilege that you have in doing that. Because while you're busy not educating yourself on the things that you said you would, 10,000 Palestinians have been killed. Families have been completely wiped out. People are pulling their children out of the rubble from the constant bombings that they're having to survive. And the people who are daring to speak out about it, like Rashida Tlaib, the only Palestinian American we have in Congress, are being silenced. Like it or not, we are living through history. So now may be the time to educate yourself so that you're on the right side of it. By now, we've all seen the image of this Israeli peace activist who was taken hostage by Hamas, shaking the hands of her pa uh, captor before she was released. Her reasoning behind doing that is that, well, they treated them nicely, basically. Now, Israel considers this person to help talking about her experience to be the biggest PR disaster in history and a mistake. And it's not surprising because the last thing that you want to hear from a first person witness to the worst terror attack since 9-11 is someone going, eh, it wasn't that bad. But of course, Western media can't run that story. No, because telling the truth would be just too much of a burden on the Western media. Can't do that. So when the terror group is more humane to hostages than the nation state they belong to, What's going on there? Who's next? As a Palestinian, to understand what is going on in Palestine is to understand the de facto apartheid that Black America. Oh yeah, wake that up, cousin. Wake it up. Mm-hmm. As a Black American who studies Black history and educates about Black history across the internet, oh my God. 
I've received the hate comments. I've received the DMs about how they were so surprised and shocked and disappointed in me about my book list about Palestine. Oh, my sweet summer child, bless your heart. I have been talking about Palestine this whole time. Mm-hmm. Because the Black struggle and the Palestinian struggle is like this. It's like this. In the 40s, 50s, and 60s, Birmingham, Alabama was bombed so much they nicknamed it Bombingham. Palestinians got to drive on separate roads. Got to go through checkpoints on those roads. Literally right now, Black farmers across the South, all 2% of them, are being driven off of their land being forced off of their farmland. You stole it once from the indigenous people, now you're trying to steal it again. Palestinians are under the control, the full control of a government that does not see them as human beings. Does that sound familiar? Like what are we talking about? Across the internet right now, people are shocked to see that some Israeli people are creating content mocking the deaths of Palestinians. Amy Till Mobley, Emma Till's mom, talked about the hate mail that she received after the murder of her son. That he deserved it because black people were animals. He was accused in hate mail and in the media of completely making up the circumstances of Emmett Till's death. Emmett Till's killers did an interview for Look Magazine bragging about how proud they were of what they had done. To this day, the Emmett Till memorial plaque has to be made bulletproof because his memorial plaque was continuously vandalized with bullet holes. I'm only using Emmett Till because he's a popular example but there are tens of thousands of stories just like that because that's how apartheid works. That's how genocide works. We haven't even gotten to this yet. Google it. Woo yeah, I don't know what y'all thought this was, but if y'all thought that a black history, a black education scholar was not going to stand 10 toes down, Palestinian people's right to freedom, dignity, and to live a life free of colonialism, apartheid, and genocide, Think you can want black people to be free but not palestinians oh put yourself in a bowl with some pretzels some dried fruit and m ms and make a trail mix because you are nuts some kids who weren't allowed to go to the palestine protest decided to make a palestine <laughs> protest on roadblocks roadblocks Ro i don't know <laughs> however roadblocks then banned the term free palestine uh, uh, okay. So the kids are now using the flag instead of the word Palestine. They've worked out a way to do it anyways. There be a whole lot of, oh, we not our ancestors, we not our ancestors, but you struggle to boycott a McGriddle. We're not our ancestors, we'll fight back, we'll fight back, but you can't handle not having a Starbucks coffee for 30 days. 30 days. Since that seems to be the only way some of y'all can communicate through your comforts, I'm gonna communicate to you just like that so you can see just how much you are not like your ancestors. But let's discuss boycotts and rebellions revolution in terms of Starbucks coffee. Yeah, cups of Starbucks coffee. Montgomery bus boycott lasted 381 days. That's 381 days without a Starbucks coffee. Auntie Harry Tubman was a conductor for the Underground Railroad for roughly 10 years, doing at least 13 trips. 10 years, that's 3,650 days. 3,650 days without a damn cup of espresso. The Haitian Revolution lasted 12 years, 4 months, 1 week, and 4 days. That is approximately 4,514 days, which means 4,514 days without a cup of motherfucking coffee. Underground Railroad in North America alone helped approximately 100,000 slaves, 100,000 enslaved people to freedom. And they roughly started their efforts in the 1810s going to about 1860. So that's approximately 40 years. 40 years is 14,600 days, meaning 14,600 days without having a pumpkin spice latte. And it's estimated that there were over 250 slave rebellions in North America alone over the span of two centuries. Knowing that the first slave ship came in 1619 and slavery ended in 1865, that's 246 years, meaning that there was a rate of over one slave rebellion every single year. That's 89,790 days, meaning 89,790 days that you cannot have a little matcha latte, pumpkin spice latte, cup of espresso, cup of coffee from Starbucks. These people, these ancestors that y'all say you are nothing like, that it out, you'll fight, they weren't just boycotting cute little comforts, no. They didn't have comforts to begin with, but they were fighting for their lives. They were fighting violence with violence. They were putting their lives on the line, their comfort, their food, their resources to fight. And you cannot handle not being able to watch a show on Disney Plus. You can't handle not being able to have a McGriddle with your cup of coffee from Starbucks. Be fucking for real. One of our interns here, uh, she said that you make music for gays. I do. I'm not the intern. I mean, she looked at me like. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Nothing at all. Nothing's wrong with it. 
I want you guys to notice the difference between celebrities slash influencers who stand with Israel versus the ones that stand with Palestine. Because the ones that stand with Palestine actually go out to protest. They educate themselves. They inform their audience. They are an active ally. Meanwhile, the celebrities that stand with Israel, they just reposted this. That's it. And they called it a day. And also had their assistant reply to an email and was like, yeah, I want to sign my name onto this thing that I barely even read. At least the celebrities that support Palestine actually know what the fuck is going on. So I want all this that are like, oh, this celebrity stands with Israel. Do they? I really don't think they give a fuck about Israel. You don't want to do your own research, that's fine. But Nelson Mandela said, we know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. Nelson Mandela, you gonna be on the opposite side of Nelson Mandela? You are much more powerful than you think. Throughout the last month, I've seen a lot of people express that they're not doing enough for people in Palestine, that their donations are too small, that they're only reaching a small number of people, that they're unable to do as much as they would like to do. But I just want to remind you that every single step, every single portion is integral to reaching people. This is something that is true for all causes and issues. And I want you to be cognizant of that moving forward. Earlier this year, me and my friend Mercury Stardust raised $2 million for a trans healthcare organization called Point of Pride. Throughout the fundraiser, which was hosted on a TikTok live, we had over 20 million people visiting, tapping the screen, sharing resources, screenshotting, essentially getting our message out there. And because of that, we were able to raise $2 million in 30 hours. Additionally, in the last 24 hours, there was a creator who was using the Creativity Effect program to raise funds for Palestine. You've probably seen the little watermelon filter on here. This is it right here. This is all you have to do. And as of the time that I'm filming this video, there have been around 350,000 people that have used this filter. 350,000 people spreading awareness. 350,000 people coming together and taking five seconds out of their day to engage with something, to reach more people, to raise funds, to help a cause. And the reason that I bring this up is because I want you to be, again, cognizant of this. When you feel like your impact isn't as strong, when you fall into this nihilistic and individualistic pattern of thinking, you forget that the small actions that you take are an integral portion of reaching people. There are things right here. I want you to engage with all of the things that you see in this area surrounding every post, not just the heart, but the text and the save and the share, every single one. Because even if the actions feel small, even if you feel disempowered and helpless, when you start to recognize that every single action helps us reach more people, which helps bring attention to something and helps provide resources and helps provide funds, you start to recognize that you are just as important as the person on this side of the screen. The next time you see a video talking about Palestine, I want you to remember that. The next time you see a person talking about an issue, I want you to remember this. And I want you to remember that even if you feel small, and powerless. You are one integral portion of a global community coming together to try to solve something. And that is not small. Life does not. Oh my God. Oh my God.
We almost lost Bisan today, guys. We almost lost Bisan, the girl that always starts off her video saying, "I'm a hi everyone, I'm still alive. Hi everybody, I'm still alive." We almost lost her by two minutes. By two minutes. By oh my god, let me show you. She just uploaded this video on her Instagram, guys. Oh my god. She what Israel is doing right now is bombing around Shifa Hospital. And I told you guys Shifa Hospital houses more than 60,000 people who have been displaced and some of them are injured and they need critical at, um medical attention and she was at the place that they bombed 2 minutes apart. She came from there and they bombed the place and so many people got injured and she was just there. She was so, so shocked that she, in the video, she's like, I, that could have been me. I was just there two minutes ago, guys, two minutes ago, we could have lost her. I don't know what's happening right now. I am so shocked and distraught and like, why is this happening? What is going on? How can anyone let this kind of demonic behavior and savage and barbaric behavior from the Israeli government continue unaliving innocent people what is this what is this the only thing keeping me going and everyone right now is the is honestly as muslim knowing that god has told us that he's going to vindicate and grant palestinians victory that is the only thing holding me together that oh i uh. Joe Biden said there is no possibility of a ceasefire in Gaza. None. This is on the heels of over 10,000 Palestinians being murdered in the last month, over 4,000 of which are children. The decimation, the horror, the brutality is live streamed to our phones. He's hearing about it. We're hearing about it. And he's saying absolutely not. So far, the best he's worked for is a few days long humanitarian pause to get the hostages out, the Israeli hostages because the Palestinian lives just don't matter apparently. This comes just days after Palestinian Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib is censured by the House, which is a condemnation so strong it's a step away from expulsion for her views on Palestine and the fact that she advocates for the liberation and safety of her people. Meanwhile, her peers in government actively support the genocide, many of them actively calling for as many Palestinian deaths as possible and some going so far to create bills to prevent Palestinian refugees from coming to the United States. And by the way, over 20 of the people who voted to censure Congresswoman Tlaib were Democrats. Democrats. Don't let them play you this upcoming November. Don't let them play you with humanitarian pauses or vote blue no matter who the Republicans are so much worse. They are making their morals and their stance on humanity very clear right now. The question is, how clear are yours? So um, I went to a protest today. It was a very beautiful show of solidarity for our siblings in struggle in Palestine. It sparked a conversation about activism and advocacy. And you know, people are always saying on social media advocacy and activism. Here's my take on that. Everyone can be the ones at the protests and the rallies. Not everyone can be the ones that's organized to set protests and rallies. Not everyone can afford to give large sums to a cause. Not everyone can make the social media videos. Like sometimes the most people can do is listen and learn. The other day, this anonymous account told me, Oh, all you Gen Z kids do is talk on the internet. Or oh, I'm actually in the boardrooms and da 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 and she's probably lying because she blocked me at that side. I don't give a fuck. But anyways, regardless, it would have been like, okay, we were on the same team. All of this, oh, I do more than you. Oh, da, 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 da. And it's like, bro, do you advocate so you can flex on people? Cause that's weird. That's <laughs> is all of this an ego stroke for you? If you ever watched American Psycho, you know the scene where Patrick Bateman is pretending to care about issues he don't care about? Like as an ego stroke? Like to seem better than his peers that he already knows are shitty people because he himself is a shitty person? It's like, yes, that's trying to flex advocacy on people. Especially to people that are trying to advocate as well. And like, you might have more experience than When Tupac said they got money for wars but can't feed the poor, he meant that because you mean to tell me you got 10 to 100 billion dollars sent to the Ukraine, Israel, and the U.S. borders, yet you can't find no money to give universal health care, student loan forgiveness, and many more other ways that you can use that money for the people in your country instead of funding a war in another country. It's feeling more and more like the United States is in one of the nine circles. Be critical of Joe Biden at the bare minimum. You can criticize Democrats. You can say, I'm not going to vote for Joe Biden. You should say that. He is supporting a genocide. The last few days, Joe Biden has requested 14.3 billion additional dollars 
our tax dollars to go to supporting Israel, and that request was approved. Even more recently, in a virtually unprecedented move, the White House is requesting the ability to approve all military weapons and equipment sales to Israel without congressional approval, pretty much making it a secret. This on the heels of his Zionist Islamophobic rhetoric? Yeah, don't vote for him. And before y'all get in my comment section talking about, well, are you going to vote Republican? Are you going to vote for Donald Trump? Stop letting them convince you we have to choose between the lesser of two evils. The Americans that I know aren't about to sit here and get dog walked by a bunch of 80 year olds who are going to live long enough to see the repercussions of their actions. Y'all don't like something? Call on the spirit of your founding fathers and do something about it. Demand that the DNC give us a better candidate. Stop letting them convince you that you have to choose between the lesser of two evils when they're about equal evil. We have a voice. We have always had a voice. Stop letting them take that from you and use it. Christian, why aren't you talking about the fact that the IDF is providing safe passage to Palestinians? From where? From the north of Gaza, which is where their homes were. Because, because it's dangerous. Because, because the IDF is about to bomb it. So it's less like they're providing them safe passage out of just the goodness of their hearts and more like the Palestinians are being forged out of their homes under the threat of death. Well, we have to get rid of Hamas, no matter who pays the price, huh? You said for what? Yeah. Cause we ain't got shit for you. <laughs> Uh, she said that you make music for gays. I do. This might also be why a lot of elite celebrities are staying silent because a lot of them are occupying land that will be the first to be given back. A lot of them own private islands like Mel Gibson, Tyler Perry, Beyond. There is a big fat reason why you do not see any person standing up for Palestinian genocide right now deleting their videos. But you see an influx of creators that for some reason sympathize with white colonialism constantly deleting comments, constantly deleting their videos, constantly rephrasing their videos. It's because no matter how you say it, how you do it, whatever you need to sleep at, right, at night, nothing you say is right. It's not fucking right. 4,327. 4,327 Palestinian kids that have died just because they're brown, they don't deserve an infographic, they don't deserve a repost. We're not asking you to single-handedly lead a revolution. We're asking you to repost an Instagram page that has already been made, an Instagram post that has already been created just so it can be easily shared. It has also been over a month, one month, something that should have been called ceasefire three days later. And I'm being generous with the three days later. It has been one month. And it's because you cannot simply put yourself in the shoes of a Palestinian person right now and imagine yourself pulling rubble off of your kid just to get them out that you cannot understand the situation fully. And I, for that, I feel sorry. I feel sorry that you have to be in a physical situation just so you can empathize with others. That is sick. What is happening right now is catastrophic. It is horrific. It is evil. And you can't be bothered to post an infographic. Why? Because it doesn't go along with your aesthetic doesn't go along with the brand deals you have it doesn't go along with the white colonialism your parents have been teaching you from this age and the up further on if your full-time job is to create a concept for an ad and then post it for over 10k the least you can do is read an article in between that is the very fucking least what's going on is disheartening and history repeats itself again and again and again and again Except instead of very ignorant white Americans just constantly watching their TV and going to work and exercising the idea of the nuclear family, we have influencers that can't be bothered to use their platform for something that's real, for something that's happening right now. Instead, we are making hypotheticals. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you unfollow me. I don't care if you unmutual me. But can you at least just sit down for one second of the day and relish in the idea of your privilege just sit down and think about it think about how much privilege you have to even just be watching this video and scroll and unfollow me this is now like the 40th take of this video but i just 
I just want to say, if you can really sit around and you can say, I'm not really sure what's happening right now. I just know it's bad or not really seeing, not really knowing what's going on, but I just know it's not good. I've just been seeing so many people comment that under other people's videos and just like with the laughing emoji. I personally find it so disrespectful. I think if you don't know what's going on, that's completely fair. A lot of the information that is happening, a lot of the things that are happening right now in Palestine has been hidden from the Western media, but not so much that you cannot get a grasp on the general situation so i can consider yourself a lucky and privileged person right now because even if you don't talk to your parents even if you may not talk to any of your family members at least you know where they are right now at least you can locate them because i promise you right now you can call 911 and they will come to your aid people in palestine right now they can dial 101 no ambulance no help nothing because their telecommunication services have been bombed they have no access to the radio they have no access to phones they have no access to the internet and if that's just not saying anything to you elon musk has already offered his internet services to the people of gaza right now because even he can see that there is a big ass issue that nobody has access to them and they have no access to the outside world that is weird that's wrong to the point where israel themselves the government is just like well no we are declaring elon musk an enemy of the state why is he an enemy of the state for giving people basic internet connection right now think about that for a second i've been unmutualed by so many of my mutuals on instagram and i don't care because i'm losing people i may never meet in my life but people right now are losing their mothers their fathers their livelihood there's ethnic cleansing going on right now they are losing so many monumental structures that mean so much to them they're losing their spirit they're losing maybe many of them are losing their faith in their god and that's not fair that's not fucking fair i know where everyone is in my life right now but so many people do not know where their own daughters their own kids their grandmas they're like i do not know how else to put it to make y'all understand that what is happening right now is so not normal it's not normal i recently celebrated my 22nd birthday and it was so 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 hard it was so hard because i get to see two two and so many people will not see the age of two and i just don't know how else to say that what is happening right now is not normal there's a link in my bio on my Instagram where you can donate even if you have five dollars that will do so much for so many people. Hi everyone. Woo, wow, you hear that? It is I think 1 p.m. We are gonna be leaving Oshkolo now because I just don't feel safe here. But I do want to give you one piece of good news that day and night, every few minutes, sometimes seconds, I can hear our IDF, our incredible army, bombing the living daylights out of Hamas. And it has given me so much strength. Uh, you can hear, I don't know if you guys can hear now. I hope that they are showing Hamas just this much of the wrath of God, showing them that if you touch a single hair on any Jew's head, we will come and we will bomb you until we just obliterate you from the face of the earth. You're proud of the Israeli army for doing their job, huh? You and God are proud of the Israeli army. Okay, well, I hope y'all are proud of this. The Israeli war planes uh, attacked and strikes a home that belonged to Abu Jbara family located in Deir al-Balah in southern uh, Gaza. We saw whole families. I myself saw children, at least 10 children, under the age of five with their heads cut off, uh, their bodies... Uh, if you can see around me, we can still see the ambulances arriving to the um, Shuhada al-Aqsa. Oh yeah, just so you know, your army has taken the lives of more civilians in the last 72 hours than Hamas has in the last 10 years. Hope you're proud of this too. Hope you're proud. This is what colonization looks like. These are colonizers on stolen land getting their rocks off to children being bombed. Palestinians with no army being displaced in real time. Not only does this make you giddy, you have the privilege and the comfortability to leave whenever you want to. Well, anyways, here in Ashkelon, we can hear everything. I'm going to Jerusalem now, God willing. We're going to leave because I, I just cannot take the constant bombing. And, like, the sirens are, are pretty much nonstop. Just sickening. Daily reminder that it's fuck McDonald's, fuck Starbucks, fuck Disney Plus, and fuck Domino's. If Israel has the right to defend itself from being attacked, why doesn't Palestine? I'll ask again. If people have the right to defend themselves by any means necessary, according to y'all's logic, then does that not also hold true for Palestine? Because no matter how you slice it, Israel is the occupying land, as in this would not have happened if Israel had not entered Palestine for whatever reason. 
So since Palestine was first attacked in 1948, according to y'all's logic, do they not also have the right to defend themselves from decades and decades of brutality? I'm not saying this to justify holding people hostage or attacking civilians, but it is the logic I consistently hear when I challenge people on why they continue to support Israel. This logic has to be a two-way street or else it doesn't float, and y'all's resistance to that is exposing the truth. The truth is y'all really don't care about peace or humanity or the children. You care about lives that look like yours. And that's sad. <laughs> This is by far the most precious thing I have ever seen in my life. You go, little kings and queens, you go. Whenever you bring up Palestine and Israel, and people are being like, I wish we could just have peace on both sides. Who are you asking to chill out here? Every time they're, talk they're talking about Palestine, every time. When you they're talking about, oh, we wish we could have peace. They're talking about Palestine chilling out. I just didn't fucking do anything. This is colonialism. This is colonization in real time. And you're telling people who are being colonized to chill out. You're telling them to, oh, if you just, if you just tried for peace. No. You're seeing every country who benefit from colonialism back the country that's colonizing. And you're still going, guys, it's a hard issue to describe. It's not a hard issue. It's genocide. 42 Palestinian family lands are completely fucking gone. Off the map and never coming back. Thousands of Palestinian children are dead and are dying. A hospital was bombed. They're online posting pictures of their dogs and animals suffering because Lord knows we won't sympathize enough with seeing them die. And you're on the side of a country who's on Instagram threatening Gigi Hadid, the Palestinian model, for not being on their side. Okay. Guys, the McDonald's stocks are down. The Disney, the Starbucks stocks are down. So guys, we have to keep boycotting these corporations. Free Palestine. Free Palestine. Free, 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 free Palestine. It's bad movies, cheap fries, and coffee. It's not that hard. You're not banished from those concepts forever. Find them somewhere else. For everyone who sees this video, uses this filter, and tags me, I'll donate $2.50 per person on top of my own personal charitable donation, and I'll make a video about it next week. Fucking get it together. We are living in an empire. A government that backs the murdering of children, journalists, genocide, and countless war crimes. If you can now realize the goal of Israel, our creation, is to occupy and colonize, you are oblivious. Talking about indigenous, you fled to Brooklyn. It's like me going to Nigeria post-slavery and being like, Mine's now. Children kidnapped. Your entire nation has a body count of over 10,000. That is generations of children you have proportionally white. At this point, 30 days in, the only people left are families and journalists, grandmothers, and young reporters. That is pure evil. We got the former commander in chief insinuating that the blood is on our hands with our tax money. Well, Yes, let that sink in that we live in a country where we cannot control the military or its decisions because of their infinite reach and power. What that reminds you of? Society needs you to recognize the difference between propaganda and information. The difference between a cornered state and one that can control its water and power. The safe routes are backed up with rubble and fallen buildings with a permanent stench of tar and smoke. How do you think that got there? We are at a point where our nation has salted the earth, disregarding its claimed humanitarian principles. An international court daring somebody to say something. I'd be lying if I told you I didn't feel a subtle growth of my guilt. And America was the only people that vetoed it. They said no. This is literally D1 level instigating. Like, this is real life instigating. Because, like, y'all want this conflict. I'll call it a conflict, but we we know what it really is. But y'all want it to be a conflict so bad. But it's a we know what it really is but it's like why are y'all why are y'all trying to instigate why are y'all trying to keep this this whole thing going like y'all had the power to stop it but y'all did not take it and then there's gi joe biden monsieur monsieur president monsieur president himself on twitter trying to make it seem like they're for the palestinian people let me let me pull up the tweet it says, and I quote, the United States remains committed to the Palestinian people's right to dignity and to self-determination. The actions of Hamas terrorists don't take that right away. Okay, but if y'all were really for Palestine, why'd y'all veto the ceasefire? If y'all are really for Palestinians, why y'all veto the ceasefire? Why were only 20 trucks allowed to go to Palestine to help them? Free Palestine till it's backwards. I'm
الصامت على ارضي ورافع على السما جبيني فلسطيني 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 انا اللي اسمي يكفيني انا الصامت على ارضي ورافع على السما جبيني Y'all motherfuckers don't got a problem with it because there's an injustice happening. Y'all have a problem because the injustice is too loud for you to ignore. I'm honestly damn near more afraid that the Palestinian people will receive some sort of aid and it'll be just enough for the global collective to be like, oh, they're okay now that they're not dying by bombs. Oh, if it's a slow death. Oh, if it's an open air prison. Oh, if it's an apartheid state. Oh, then that's okay. This is why we don't call for peace. We don't just call for a ceasefire. We call for liberation. Shit, the thing that stands in the way of liberation the most is peace. It's damn near a textbook abusive relationship in that the abuser keeps the abused in a state where the abused is constantly looking towards the abuser for its peace. When the abuser is the thing keeping it from peace in the first fucking place. The truth of the matter is though, that your For You page will go back to normal. And you will have to intentionally seek out this information and most of you won't. Because in all reality, you never cared about the problem. You just cared that the problem was affecting you. Imagine there's no countries. If you care about what's going on in Palestine, I need a few seconds of your time, you guys know the deal. Before I go on, I want to say that I am a mouthpiece for Palestinian people in this moment, so giving me attention helps us reach more people with their message. With that said, you need to go and give them just as much attention, if not more. As a lot of y'all know, there's been a lot of decentralized boycotts going on, so I want to direct you to the BDS National Committee, which is run by Palestinian people. Boycotting has multiple faces. These are the companies that they are asking you to explicitly boycott. These companies are consistent in helping the IDF and Israel. Next up, we have this list of companies that are complicit in benefiting and profiting off of what's going on to Palestinian people. Moving on, we have the pressure slash non-boycott, and these are these companies. If you're wondering what you can do in regards to these companies, they are calling for you to reach out to these companies and let them know to stop being complicit in what's going on in Israel. As it says, we have not on strategic grounds called for a boycott of these brands and services. So while you're absolutely welcome to stop using these companies and services, what they are asking is that you reach out to them and pressure them. Last on the list, we have these companies which have supported the apartheid against Palestinian people and the genocide. The grassroots boycotts of these companies were not started by the BDS National Committee, however, they do stand against boycotting them. With that said, boycotting is most effective when it is centralized and when it targets a set number of companies. Again, this isn't to say that you can't stop targeting the companies that you've individually decided to boycott. However, these need to be the majority of our targets and we should be meeting their demands. And as always, please go and support the organization that I just showed, because while using my voice is important. What's even more important is amplifying the voices and supporting the voices of Palestinian people right now. MLK embraced Israel. Does BLM embrace Hamas? Uh, Israel has a right to exist. MLK would be turning over in his grave right now. I wonder what MLK would think. Okay, let's talk about it. It's the summer of 1967, and Martin Luther King Jr. is scheduled to take thousands of African Americans, black people, to Israel for a tour of the Holy Land. But something catastrophic happens that complicates the entire plan. People love to use MLK to fit whatever agenda they have at the moment. But we don't have to guess where he stands. He speaks for himself. I have the transcript from an interview that MLK did on national TV in 1967 that rarely gets talked about. But first, some context. This trip to Israel was going to be huge. Records indicate that he planned to preach a sermon from the Mount of Olives the place where Jesus ascended into heaven. He plans to pray with thousands of people at the region's holy sites in Jerusalem and Galilee. This was going to be his Moses moment, taking black people to the promised land. But the problem is that just a few weeks before, Israel launched a preemptive attack against the pro-Palestine alliance of Egypt, Syria, and Jordan, starting what became known as the Six Day War, which killed around 800 Israelis and about 18,000 Arabs in less than a week. It also fundamentally changed the map. Israel expanded its borders, gaining about four times the land it had before, capturing Jerusalem and establishing military occupation in the Gaza Strip. Even though the war was over in just six days, MLK will cancel his trip, and this war will mark a turning point in King's nuanced position on Israel. Here's the statement. The interviewer asks MLK, should Israel, in your opinion, give back the land she has taken in conflict? And here's part of MLK's response. I think for the ultimate peace and security of the situation, it will probably be necessary for Israel to give up this conquered territory because to hold on to it will only exacerbate the tensions and deepen the bitterness 
of the Arabs. This moment offers profound insight into what King believed was necessary to achieve peace between Israel and Palestine. King's name and legacy are thrown around carelessly to justify all kinds of things, but in this instance, we don't have to guess what he thought. It is a privilege for you to sleep and not worry if you'll be here tomorrow morning. It is a privilege for you to sleep in silence, uh, having no noise of bombs breaking your eardrums. You sleep peacefully in your bed, not worrying if your roof will crush you as you rest. It is your privilege watching your kids actually grow up. It is a privilege having your kids go to school and not accustomed to modern day slavery, working in disgusting and horrible conditions with no pay. It is a privilege having food and water. It is a privilege practicing your beliefs in peace. Know your privilege privileges for there are those who do not have it. Know that you are privileged and fight for those who do not have it. And you may say, Sarah, these are basic human rights. These should not be privileges, but a norm. But unfortunately, we have human invasive, cruel and greedy human beings who live on this planet who think that there are gods and take humanity, basic human rights away from people. And because of that, we must use our voice. We must use our privileges. We must fight for those who had their humanity taken away from them. We must fight for Palestine. We must fight for Congo. We must fight for Syria. We must fight for Haiti. We must fight for Sudan. We must fight for the Native Americans. We must fight for those people who have been suffering at the hands of greedy people. You sit here at your comfort. Your comfort is your privilege. And we will not see change if we do not give up our comfort. We must pray for those who had their humanity taken away from them. We must continue fight or we will not see change. Or else in the future, we also will become those victims. Do not stay silent. Fight. So the United Nations voted in favor of resolution condemning Israel's illegal settlement building in Palestine and Syria. Guess who voted against it? Of course, usual play. We are at 10,000 dead Palestinians. How many will be enough? I also, one of my colleagues just said all of them. Wow. One of my colleagues said all of them. One of my colleagues also stated that this is gonna dry up their fundraising if we vote on this resolution. I also want that, like, that's what we've become in this state. That's what we've become in this state where we don't care about innocent babies that don't even get the opportunity to blow out their first birthday candle. You don't have survivor's guilt. Watching the videos and reading the post for many of the Palestinian people who are losing loved ones or their communities or lost their lives might be traumatizing, might bring up feelings of guilt in you with the knowledge that your community and that your country is funding this genocide, but you don't have survivor's guilt. I know this might hurt to hear, but it's important that we remember as non-Palestinians and especially as many of us are Westerners, our grief and our emotions are not the star of the show right now. This isn't about us. And as allies and as human beings, we have to remember that and we have to stay engaged and tuned in. We have to. What you're experiencing is one of the hardest parts about having basic human empathy for others, and it can be really difficult, and there's nothing we can do to cope with this kind of trauma that we're witnessing. The only thing worse than, let's say, reading someone else's last messages from their little sister is getting those messages from your little sister. It's not about us, and we have to remember that, and we have to keep it pushing. We have to. One day you will lie to your grandkids about supporting the Palestinians, the same way your grandparents lied to you about supporting the civil rights movement. The only difference now is, now you have a digital footprint. Now we have a record of where you stood. Now this one right here, this one right here shook me to my core. I'm not even gonna hold you. 56% of Republicans, over half of the same people who put the Cheeto, the giant orange Cheeto in office, 56% of them even agree that this violence is very unnecessary. From the people who brought to you, mm, kids in cages, I don't, I don't really care that much. From the people who literally support some of the most despicable policy in the history of man. These people, them, and this is no shade to y'all. Actually, it is shade to y'all. I don't even like y'all like that. Um, but 56%. 
even they know that this is ridiculous. Josephine Rodrigo Biden, girl, you you have a big storm coming. It you is not eating the way you think you is uh, next year. I don't see it for you, sweetie, and I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, how are you to the right of Republicans? Wow. Just step in there real quickly to encourage my black folk who are really about this free Palestine shit to continue standing on business. I need us to continue standing on business. You hear me? I say free Palestine with the conviction of my Haitian ancestors who were robbed of seeing the liberation of my country fully realized. Ain't shit a Zionist could say to me. Ain't shit anybody supporting the nation state of Israel could say to me. And I can say that with that conviction because of my willingness to remain informed and educated. You know how many of my friends, family, mutuals have been complaining about an influx of Zionists in their comments and DMs calling them anti-Semitic for being and standing in solidarity with Palestinians? Accusations of anti-Semitism do not move me. And it's because of my what? My willingness to remain informed and educated. Exactly. If me standing in solidarity with the Jewish folk in Grand Central who protested and said you will not commit genocide in our names makes me anti-Semitic. If me being against one of the longest ongoing ethnic cleansing operations we have seen to date makes me anti-Semitic. If me being against the perversion and bastardization of Judea's teachings the oppression of a people, the Holocaust, to further your colonial project and interest makes me anti-Semitic? If me standing in solidarity with Palestinians during an ongoing genocide makes me anti-Semitic, then lock me up. Lock me up. I must do time. So I need y'all to keep listening, reading, watching, staying informed, boycotting i need us to stand on business because i said free palestine you said free palestine we said free palestine bitch free palestine free sudan free congo free all my bitches free all my bitches mm. do you know what that tastes like like a company that doesn't support genocide we all know snl is tone deaf as fuck but this just reset fucking astronaut Everything is connected. The writer strike just ended. And frame one, the first thing that Hollywood decides to release. What if we made a skit where our band is called Hamas and say, dude, I'm not sharing a Hamas song on Instagram. Like one, it's Saturday Night Live. It's not funny. Like we, we've been through this before. But again, I just got to let people know uh, Hollywood has ties to Zionism. They all do. Happy that the writers and the actor strike is over, but understand the average celebrity that is in that is a Zionist. Timothy Chalamet said that on Saturday Night Live, but also know that they resumed production on the new Captain America movie, which explores going through a brave new world, that's the name of the movie, with an IDF soldier. I, I actually can't make that up. That sounds like something out of South Park. As the genocide in Gaza continues, do not let anybody tell you that your voice and support for the people of Palestine does not matter. We've watched world leaders turn their backs on Palestine, the United States of America openly supporting and funding this ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people. Now more than ever is the time to be loud about your support of a free Palestine. The point of all this propaganda and all this dehumanization of the Palestinians is to make you think that you are crazy for not wanting this to happen to them. You are being made to feel absolutely insane for having empathy for people who are having bombs dropped on them day after day after day. Innocent civilians, men, women, and children, people who have done nothing wrong. What we're witnessing is an ethnic cleansing. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Israel wants to wipe Palestine off of the face of the earth. There have been over 45 different bloodlines. This is entire families gone, just completely 
erased. That's a lot of people. And even worse, it's being funded by American tax dollars. We're paying for this shit. This is unacceptable. So now is not the time to turn away or be silent. Do what you can. If that means going out and protesting, then go out and protest. If that means to share or amplify voices, then share and amplify voices. Because if you don't know what to say, then damn it, there are a lot of people who fucking do. And you got to share these things. Like, like, this is not a time to just look away for this. Because as soon as we look away, they're going to be gone. We have to keep our eyes on this because we cannot trust our governments to do the right thing in this situation. They've already proven that they just don't want to. The strongest thing that you can do right now is to speak up against the atrocities against the Palestinian people and just show your support. Free Palestine, sending y'all so much love. Voting in favor of silencing Rashida Tlaib as the only Palestinian member of Congress amidst the genocide of Palestinians has got to come with consequences. Richie Torres, you're losing your job. Dan Goldman, you're losing your job. Greg Landsman, guess what? You're losing your job. Every single one of you who voted to silence Rashida is losing your jobs come 2024. We're kicking you out of office, and if you try to run again, we're kicking you out of office again. If you're a constituent watching this and you're thinking, oh my god, how are we going to keep track of all these people? That's where we come in. Our goal as a civic tech platform is to push progressive candidates and to make you all aware of when and where your representatives are running so that you can either vote them out or keep them. If you're sickened by how your politicians have responded to the genocide of Palestinians and you're feeling helpless and you don't know where to channel all that energy beyond the boycotts and the sharing of the information and the calling your representatives, you can make them lose their jobs. Never forget that. Personally, I will never forget the names of the politicians who have sat here and pretended that the slogan from the river to the sea calls for this hypothetical eradication of Israel, the same country that is actively and materially eradicating Palestine, both in Gaza and in the West Bank. If you're on the same page and you want to help push for progressive candidates who won't take money from the Israeli lobby and kick out all the ones who are taking money from the Israeli lobby, join us. We would love to have you. We're a team of volunteers working to get this information out to everybody next year. We can't lose momentum and we must be organized and focused and determined. The 2024 election is not just an election. It's a battleground that we must win and we'd love to do it with your help. Let's do this. So obviously we know that Israel is losing the PR war really badly and they're very panicked about that. And so this image, which is AI generated of a crowd supporting Israel, is really funny, especially when you compare it to the real image of like tens of thousands of people all over the world supporting Palestine. But beside the inherent comedy of that, it is actually really concerning that AI is being used to generate state propaganda. Like, there was another post from Israel that was like, Hamas leadership is living in luxury while they use their citizens as human shields. Every image of the Hamas leadership, AI generated. And like, right now, we're able to spot it because A, we're all pretty internet savvy, and B, AI has not been developed to the point that it's like completely indistinguishable. But what happens to people who are not chronically online, or what happens when AI does get to that level? This is some really dangerous stuff. That's very interesting. But what do we do about the gays? I mean, how do we get rid of them? Starting to center influencers rather than center the suffering. Anika has extremely valid points. And if you've been following me for quite some time, you know that my brain just works in a very unique way. So please walk with me while I explain this. So in Anika's video, she expresses that right now on TikTok and across social media, she feels like people are centering influencers and celebrities more than the suffering of the Palestinian people, which I agree 1000%. However, because we do live in a vacuum as far as I'm seeing the world right now I feel like people want to see whoever they support support the things that they support and I'm gonna use the Marvel Comics Civil War storyline to drive this point home so please stay with me because I promise it's going to make sense this was probably the biggest crossover in like the Marvel Comics history like this in my opinion honestly and I made a video about Captain America Civil War, but I'm using this instead because this was on a much larger scale. And when it first came out, I feel like you cannot sit here and tell me if you are a Marvel comic stan that you were not trying to see 
which side your favorite superhero was on. Because just like in Captain America Civil War, in the comics, there was this registration act that was being passed on superhumans where they would have to essentially register their identities with the government because there had been way too many casualties in the stuff that they were doing. And I remember as a kid, like combing through these comics, trying to figure out which one of my superheroes was on Captain America's side. Because again, back then I was on Captain America's side. And so I wanted to see if my favorite superhero superheroes were on his side as well. And the ones that weren't on Captain America's side and decided to side with Tony instead, I just chose to not like them. That's probably why I don't like Spider-Man. That's probably why I don't like Mr. Fantastic because in my eyes, they stood with the enemy. Now, in a time where people are more connected than ever, people feel more isolated than ever. And I think that knowing which side you are on in any issue really helps people understand where they can place you in their lives. Because for the past, three years since honestly since Trump was elected for the past seven years we have witnessed so many divisions across all lines that I think people have had enough of the flip-flop fancy behavior and now we have reached a point in history with the Palestinian with the Israeli issue that people are just like no this can't go on you can't be silent anymore you have to speak up so we know the people know where they can place you in their lives. That's why the celebrities and the influencers are, I consider the superhumans because they have this power to really use their platform and their voices to kind of stop everything that is going on. Again, with great power comes great responsibility. You cannot have this like God tier level superpower and then not use it. If you would entertain me further, this is why even though I have Taylor's version as my username now, I don't expect much from Taylor Swift even though I really would like for her to use her platform because at the end of the day, first, this is a white woman. Second, I've never really known Taylor Swift to be a humanitarian. I've never really heard of her charitable acts. I've never heard her donating money or time or energy or resources. Not saying that she has not. I want to be very clear. I don't know what her charity acts look like. I don't know if she's even made charitable contributions both privately or publicly. However, from the much that I do know about Taylor, I don't know her as a humanitarian. Whereas in recent videos where I have talked about Beyonce, I do know her to be a humanitarian. I do know her to be a charitable person. She literally performed at, um, what was it? The humanitarian day, like celebration. Yes, she performed. I was here at the World Humanitarian Day at the United Nations. And I used to watch this music video like religiously when I was in middle school. But I knew Beyonce from this moment on as like a humanitarian woman because she did something like this and put herself out there to be considered so. So bringing this back to the Civil War storyline is that the main issue in this entire, I guess, series or franchise is that Human rights are being stripped away. Human rights are being violated. However, for the Marvel stand, for the Marvel comic reader, they see it as, okay, well, which side is my favorite superhero is on? And you can't say that you did not you did not think that when you first saw this comic book come out. I feel like at that point you're lying. So yes, while I do think that it is important for regular people on this app to continue to use their own personal platforms to spread awareness, to talk about these issues, to try and find more resources to help the Palestinian people, I also think, and Anika also said this as well in her video, I also think that it's time for the superhumans to do their part and like help the people that have followed them, have invested time, energy, resources into them, I think it's time for them to play their part or play their role. Again, you cannot ask people to go see your movie. You cannot ask people to buy your beauty products, your perfumes, your lingerie, your skin, whatever, and then not give anything back in return. And if you choose to stand with Israel, then stand on that. Don't backtrack because then you look flip floppy. Stand on it and be firm about it. Because in the general public's eyes, they have elected you guys, the celebrities, the influencers, as gods. And in so doing that, you now have this god tier power that you probably didn't ask for. You really did not want. But again, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. Y'all know when you say I still need to educate myself on stuff that you actually gotta go do that. 
You know what it means when you see my face. Let me clear the room. In the video that I just stitched, Isaiah Dante introduces the topic of desensitization and what it actually does to our society and how it affects the communities that are actually being hurt by this. And today, we're gonna talk about why that is. Here's my unpopular opinion. The truth is the lack of education and art of being politically articulate isn't the main cause of desensitization. It is the lack of a legitimate civil rights movement. The problem is, is that we're using our platforms to educate people when we actively fail to realize that we're the audience that we're talking to. When are we going to realize that we hear us? It's them that don't. And when I say them, I'm talking to the people who actually have the power to fund this shit. To fund this ethnic fucking cleansing. The problem is, is that we don't need any more education. There is enough information surfacing around on social media every single day and Google is free. You don't need to be politically articulate or understand the depths and the details to understand that this is a fucking genocide. The problem is, is that we are not using social media actively to make real change. What we do need is real group leaders who are willing to orchestrate groups to stand outside of these fast food places such as McDonald's and boycott that shit until the police comes. That is what's going to make real change. That is the only way they are going to hear us. I know this is very hurtful to say, but our voices do not matter. And I don't know if you've seen it yet, but wake the fuck up. So I don't mean to be insensitive here, but if it wakes somebody up, let me just say this. Your little repost or your little free Palestine in your bio or your fucking uh, uh, change your, your profile picture to the Palestine flag, no one gives a fuck. And I'm sorry, but that is the truth. And unfortunately, social media being used as an outlet to educate on these platforms does more of a disservice than it does to help. And let me explain why. I don't know if y'all can tell, but as long as social media has been around, social media has been about nothing but trends. What the fuck is trendy about somebody's life being taken? Perfect example, and I got two. In 2019, y'all changed y'all profile pictures blue and used the hashtag Free Sudan. What happened? Exactly. In 2020, when the Black Lives Matter movement happened, what happened to all those donations and charities? Where did all that money go? I'll wait. Oh, okay, because I don't know a single family who got helped. Like, do y'all even remember that there are slaves in Liberia right now? Or was that a trend you forgot? Yeah. The difference between activism then and now is not only that we're so severely distracted, we're not willing to go to war. When the civil rights movement happened, it occurred in 1954 and it didn't end until fucking 1968. I'll do the math for you to spare you time. That's 14 years. Are y'all willing to boycott 14 years to free Palestine, to free Congo, to free Haiti, to free Sudan? Y'all are not doing the real work. What does that mean and what does that look like? That means willing to risk your life over these countries. People were getting washed with hoses. People were getting batted by policemen. Are y'all ready for that kind of war? The problem is, I fear y'all aren't. Like, do y'all realize we are trying to end an ethnic fucking cleansing? Not somebody who just got jumped. Even if just one billion of us was to stay dedicated and stop funding and investing into these companies who don't give a fuck about us because i don't know if you guys recognize but we're just numbers to them then they will hear us you gotta realize that this shit is about fucking money at the end of the day the jim crow laws got removed because businesses were failing for example the montgomery buses ended the law that black people needed to sit at the back of the bus in defense of rosa after she got arrested and went to jail for years Y'all got to realize that the power we have lies in the fact that we are the majority. We are what keep these businesses in business. We are what make these businesses matter. If one billion of us just stay dedicated and stop buying McDonald's and Coca-Cola for six months, they will see a difference. Y'all can't be like, it's not that deep to control what I eat and control who I listen to and control what I watch and control what businesses I support and still yell free Palestine. That is the truth. And before, cause I know it's coming. Before any of y'all raggedy asses try to stitch my video and talk about, oh, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with educating. I never said that there was. Let me be clear. 
There's nothing wrong with educating and raising awareness to these current events, but the problem is, is that that's not what's going to bring real change. That's not what's going to free Palestine. That's the truth. I I'm sorry, I'm sorry, shoot me, but I'm sorry. Y'all have to realize that the reason why the civil rights movement actually removed the Jim Crow laws is that people were willing to put their lives on the line. People were getting beat and killed behind this. But I'm not ready to put my life on the line. I'm not ready to risk it all. Guess what? Nor were they. Nor was Palestine. Nor was Congo. Nor was Haiti. Nor was Sudan. Nor was Liberia. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm gonna end this video on this note. You cannot expect change at the sake of your own safety and comfortability. Lives are being lost. Children are dying. The real question is not what's going on right now. The real question is, are you ready to do the fucking work? Check my math. See if the math is mathing. You know what I'm saying? Because I know I'm not tweaking. You're not. So let's talk about it because I think the same thing you're thinking. The Arab-Israeli war ended in 1949 with Israel's victory, which means that since 1949, Israel has been slowly, slowly killing Palestinians since 1949. So when I saw that Israel has like declared war on Palestine, I was really confused because you guys have already been doing this, but like slowly. But I've noticed that this feels different. Like it really feels like Israel's doing their big one. And the way that the U.S. is supporting them, like supporting the killing of Palestinians over something that Hamas specifically did, has really just made me scratch my head. Why are we going so hard? Why are we going so intense? You guys have been doing this slowly for years. And now all of a sudden, cutting off electricity, water, aid, everything. Like you're trapping them in there and bombing them. And the U.S. is helping because you're trying to kill one terrorist organization. That doesn't sound right. And then I saw an AI generated image of what an Israeli person created, some real estate agent, of what they want to do to Palestine once all the people are gone. And it's really people in the comment section saying, when can we start buying real estate in Palestine to build this AI, whatever, whatever? Like they're trying to essentially create a Dubai over Palestine, over Palestinian land. And then it all just kind of clicked for me. That's why you guys are going so hard. Not to mention Joe Biden asking for a hundred billion dollars for Ukraine, Taiwan and Israel. But Ukraine's only getting 60 billion. Minimum 10 billion dollars are going towards military for Israel. What about the rest? Why are we going so hard? And why are we going so hard so quickly? Y'all have been wanting to do this slow this whole time. Now, all of a sudden, I just, I just think we need to be asking these questions. When black and brown people say that they don't trust white people, this is why. Not one single white Congress person has signed the ceasefire resolution. And for context, Let's look at how many white members of Congress there are compared to black and brown members. So 75% of Congress is white. And I don't think this is an unusual disappointment um, because as we can see, especially in this situation, allyship is capricious. Allyship is something that is given and can be taken away. Whereas solidarity, the inherent knowing that my plight is tied to your plight, that my liberation is dependent on your liberation, is something that is immovable. It's something that cannot be given and taken. So even with really progressive white Congress people, I just don't expect it because I feel like there's not that inherent knowing that their, their individual actual plight is tied to mine, is tied to yours. Lewis and I rise today in opposition to this central res resolution um, and in also in opposition to the reckless manner that people in this house speak when they don't realize or don't care that they put targets on the backs of actual people, most of whom are black and brown, because of, of uh, a lack of care and a lack of understanding and a lack of seeing the humanity of folks who look like Rashida Tlaib. It's outrageous that my colleagues are blatantly, blatantly attempting to 
Dr. Silas, the only Palestinian American representative right here. Um, it's outrageous, but it's not surprising. And let me tell you, it's not surprising because this place is where 1,700 members of Congress, this elected body, enslaved black people. It's not surprising because they thought it was right. It's not surprising because this is a place where members continue to claim that the insurrection on the Capitol just appeared to look like a normal tourist visit. It's not surprising because this is the place where our black and brown staff members repeatedly speak of experiencing racism and sexism, Islamophobia, get pushed off of elevators, xenophobia and more right here in this workplace. This is the place. And let me say this. She mourns for the 1400 Israelis. The gentlelady's time has expired. She mourns for the 10,000 and she will not stop. The no gentlelady's more. time no has more expired. No more cease fire now. And she takes the, the death threats that you all send. That, that the gentlelady is no longer speaker. recognized. The gentleman from Maryland. To hurt, to hurt. Well, the desire to save lives is greater. Gentle, gentleman from Maryland is recognized. That's okay. what I said. Stop reposting those huge ass boycott lists. I was guilty of doing it too. But what y'all need to be sharing is the actual BDS list of brands to boycott. You can find it on their website. Because this is the type of information those long lists are spreading. They're telling us to boycott Google. No, they're not. Google is in the non-boycott section. Most of y'all have a Gmail account. How would you possibly be able to organize a full boycott against Google? But how can we put pressure on these big corporations? Y'all, y'all do realize all of these huge corporations have TikToks, Instagrams, and physical locations just like any other business. I've seen y'all come together and leave one-star reviews on restaurants that you've never been to and ruin their reputation on Google reviews. When Keith Lee left a bad review on The Real Milk and Honey, I watched y'all flood their Instagram comments, flood their TikTok comments, leave bad reviews. Half of y'all have never even been to Atlanta, let alone The Real Milk and Honey. I watch y'all flood influencers' comment sections with Free Palestine. How about you go do that to those corporations who can actually put their money where their mouth is? To all my people organizing protests, they the backbone for real. Shout out to them. Protest in front of the brick and mortar locations, in front of the Amazon offices, in front of the Google offices, in front of the Disney offices. I don't know if y'all saw, but there was an act of civil disobedience recently at Cory Booker's office. That's putting pressure on somebody. Then we have people complaining because there are so many monopolies on those long ass lists that y'all are reposting. Which like, congratulations, that's the entire point of a monopoly. Of course it's gonna be hard to boycott somebody that owns everything. That's why the targeted boycotts are so important. And then of course we have the boycotts that the BDS is not promoting, but we socially have kind of decided that we're not gonna shop there and we are gonna boycott them. Then you have evil, evil people like this, which I cannot express how angry that makes me and I can make a whole other video on that singular tweet alone. But yeah, we have, collectively decided that we're not going to starbucks because they have shown who they support and i believe stuff like that is fine like rare beauty we've collectively decided that selena has put her money where her mouth is and shown us who she stands with so the beauty girlies have decided that they're not shopping with her because of her statements and all of that is fine and dandy and i encourage and am participating in these other boycotts that we've decided on but a real major emphasis needs to be put on the bds list instead of y'all sharing those very long lists of monopolies I'm seeing those lists actually do more discouragement in these boycotts than they're doing encouragement. You have people saying there's no way they could boycott all that stuff so they're just not going to boycott anything at all. And do not also forget that we are boycotting new technology for Congo. How hard is it to not drop $1,500 on a new iPhone, a new MacBook, a new Apple Watch? And I don't want to hear how bad you need it because half of y'all got them phones on payment plans. You can't even afford the damn phone but you need it that bad? All these people are asking is you buy refurbished products, you use the products you have until they're actually broken. Like some of y'all are on these plans where you get a new phone every time it drops. You haven't paid for a phone fully in like seven years. You just can't even afford half the technology you have. You can't even afford the Apple Watch that's on your wrist and it's costing people their lives. Like y'all would rather be in credit card debt at the expense of someone else's lives, plural, than save money by doing the bare minimum that you can to help other people. Crazy. Are you going to desert? Are you going to refuse to serve? Are you willing to go to jail if you're not serving in Israel? All the comments on that post that talk about switching sides, you can swap sides when you get there. Let's be honest with ourselves, the majority of the soldiers, if they were sent to Israel to fight Palestinians, they're not switching sides. They're not risking jail time. They're not risking dishonorable discharge. What exactly is the joke? What's the punchline? I have seen so many of these American military TikToks recently and I'm genuinely starting to get sick. 
I have seen several about women being drafted into the US military, which I don't think will happen, but all of the comments are women talking about, oh, well, I could never serve, you know, I have an upset tummy, and oh, I cry when I chip a nail, how could I ever serve in the army, that's your moral objection. And you're going to be like, oh, Mutaz, it's a joke, it's a joke, all jokes have a semblance of truth to them, that's what you object to. The comments that I saw on a video the other day talking about, oh, well, if they forgive my student loan, if they pay off my debt, if they do this, yeah, I'd do it. Do you understand what you're saying? I can't tell if these are people who don't watch the news or have absolutely no shame. But to make those kind of jokes in the kind of climate that we're in now, given what's going on in Palestine, is absolutely insane to me. To make those kind of jokes, having any understanding of what the US military has done in other countries, and particularly in the Middle East, is absolute insanity. Every time I think about US military involvement in foreign countries, countries in the Middle East, I think about a million dead Iraqis. I think about daily bombs in Syria. I think about the first time that I saw pictures of pre-Civil War Somalia and I could not connect the two. I could not understand that the Somalia that I'd seen in the news all my life used to look like that, that that's the Somalia my mum grew up in. So many of the people making these jokes are and even if they're not, there are people who have no real understanding of war. They don't understand what it means, they don't understand the consequences, they don't understand the devastation. All they do and they just don't care because the victims are of a certain demographic. There are so many people whose favourite talking point is, oh well you live in the West, what do you know about Palestine, what do you know about war, why do you care, why are you in support of Palestinians? Firstly, some of us actually have morals and I don't need to be Palestinian, I don't need to be Muslim, I don't need to be black in order to see that what's going on is wrong, that it's genocide, that it's ethnic cleansing, it's immoral, that it's illegal. But even put all of that to one side, so many of us know what US involvement means. So many of us come from countries that have been devastated by US involvement, by Western involvement, by British involvement. I cannot understand making jokes like that at a time like this and I cannot understand where people are finding the humour. Women! You are, listen, Obama, shut up your mouth, Obama. Shut up your mouth, Obama. CCS, CCS. Mercy no, mercy no. How the fuck is this legal? L like, how the fuck is this legal? This is proposing a bill to expel Palestinians from the United States and ban them from entering the country. Mind you, there are U.S. citizens that are Palestinian. What the fuck? And there's already 10 Republicans that signed it. Look at what they're trying to do. The SAFE Act, what the hell? So the BDS movement has put together a new list of the companies that we really shouldn't be supporting. And they basically put out this detailed explainer in this link below. The difference between targeted and non-targeted boycotts, what we want is a targeted boycott, which is why those extensive lists of, boy of brands that we need to boycott are kind of... And basically why this entire movement was created. Many of the long lists going viral on social media do the exact opposite of the strategic and impactful approach. They include hundreds of companies, many without credible evidence of their connections to Israel's regime of oppression against Palestinians, a Palestinians making them ineffective. So the BDS movement, boycott, disinvestments, and sanctions have done their research, and they're basically telling you what to boycott now. So there are four different types or four different sections. You have the consumer boycotts, which is calling for the complete boycott of these brands carefully selected due to the company's proven record of complicity in Israel's apartheid. And then divestment targets, those are mainly pressuring governments, institutions, and investment funds to exclude and divest from those companies or banks. You have the pressure or non-boycott targets. The BDS movement actively calls for pressure campaigns against these brands and services due to their complicity in Israel's apartheid. They haven't called for um, a boycott for these brands. Instead, they are strategically called on supporters and institutions to mount other forms of pressure on those brands. Then you have the organic boycott targets. So with the consumer boycott targets, companies you need to stop buying from, you can see the brands here, mainly Puma hp soda stream and then any um product or produce that says um produced in israel the divestments those are mainly for um government so you don't really need to worry about that now the pressure or non-boycott targets you have google amazon expedia disney airbnb and booking.com and they explain each one for google and amazon if you go to the link of the beat on the bds website and you click the join the hashtag no tech for apartheid campaign i'm gonna go fill out this form here demand amazon and google to stop doing businesses with apart israel apartheid empowering genocidal bombings of palestinians in gaza they are not right now asking you you to boycott Amazon and Google. Now, if you want to do that, go ahead and do that, but they're not really asking you to. And with Disney, they're not asking you to boycott Disney. Again, if you want to boycott Disney, go ahead and do that. Unsubscribe from Disney Plus. It's too expensive anyway. But um, 
so Marvel Studios, the new Captain America movie, has a superhero that personifies apartheid Israel. So basically put pressure on Marvel about the new Captain America movie and that new superhero. I have the grassroots organic campaigns, McDonald's, Burger King, Papa John's, Pizza Hut. I would also add Starbucks to this. Now, Starbucks is not here because it has not been called out by the BDS movement. The Starbucks boycott was initiated by, I think, the Starbucks union in response from Starbucks, like, retaliating against them for their pro-Palestine pro statements on Twitter. Boycotts take time. They're designed to be a long-term, long-lasting protest to get people or companies to change their ways in a long-term sense. It will take longer than a few weeks. McDonald's, Disney, Starbucks, they all might be offering promotions now. That is to weed the weak of us out. Don't fall for it. Boycotts are designed to literally push them out of business until they change their ways. It will be inconvenient for you. And if you're experiencing boycott fatigue after two weeks, really ask yourself why you're in this fight. You do get that I stand with Israel and Jews will not replace us means the same thing to some people. So what am I talking about? So a lot of white Christian nationalists don't like anybody but white Christian nationalists. And one of the groups they truly think should not be in the United States are Jews. They have a strong belief that their right to be in America is much stronger than Jewish people. Of course, many of those people actually are descended of settlers who came long after Jews have been in North America because a lot of Jews came as early as New Amsterdam, before this was a nation. But really, none of these arguments have anything to do with history. And the fear that the Jews will overtake them is this idea that numerically, but also politically, Jews will have an outsized impact on our nation because their perception is that this is a Christian nation. Again, there is no history here because we were not founded as a Christian nation. Remember separation of church and state in school? So what does that have to do with I stand with Israel? Well, two things. One, many people who are Christian nationalists believe that one way to solve this problem is Zionism. Send those Jews to Israel. But the second thing has to do with the fact that many Christian nationalists are evangelicals. And evangelicals believe for the Messiah to come, Jerusalem has to be ruled by Jews. Now, I will point out that if the Messiah comes, all the people who are not faithful, so the people who are not born again, will die. So they do not want the Jews there to save the Jews or for the future of the Jews to be positive. It is not anything but another form of anti-Semitism. But I stand with Israel is basically like saying, I do not want Jews to outnumber me in the United States. So I stand with Israel is saying, I stand with Israel taking all the Jews and being there so that when, at the end of times, I am okay, but not the Jews. And we go into these complicated issues this week in the podcast. <laughs> Whatever that fucking man. One of our interns here, uh, she said that you make music for gays. I do. You may not like it, but you better learn how. Because it's your turn now. Now you suck. The head of the UN has finally condemned Israel's actions towards the Palestinians for the past 75 years that they have been torturing and basically ethnically cleansing the Palestinians in yesterday's UN meeting. Let me show you guys. In the Security Council yesterday, the chief of the UN condemned Israel's actions and literally called them out for everything they have done to Palestinians for all these years. And guess what they have, what Israel has done? As the narcissistic sociopath that they are, they said Israel uh, demands uh, UN chief resign after he says Hamas attacks uh, did not occur in a vacuum. So he called them out because like we said, Israel knew Hamas was going to attack them and they coordinated, calculated the whole thing so that they can get away with the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians and so that no one can say that, oh, 
Israel is not just attacking them. The Hamas attack first. They planned Hamas's attack, and uh, the UN chief called them out on it. And everything else they have done to the Palestinians, and just like the narcissistic sociopaths they are, they want this guy to resign. They want to kick him out of office because they're like, nope, he's not on. He's not on our side. He got to go. Just like everybody else, anyone that speaks against them and condemn their actions, they, every, that person has to be fired. That person has to be blacklisted. Guys, they took it a step further to ban any visa to any UN officials um, entering um, Israel and all of that. Like, how insane are you? You don't even, you can't even take responsibility out of uh, for your own actions. You have, you have unalived civilians, children. You have done the worst of humankind, and you will not even take responsibilities. Like, you would not. Like, n narcissistic sociopaths. This is how they behave. Israel, like the government of Israel and everybody that is responsible for this are literally demonic people. I've been telling you guys, demons operate in this uh, sense. Satanic people are the ones that do this. And now they want, they're coming after the UN. They're, they have come for celebrities. They have come for TikTokers. They have come for Al Jazeera. They have come for everyone that tries to um, condemn them. And all their journalists, the first thing that they say to any other uh, uh, um, press person that comes that is in the side of Palestine, do you condemn Hamas? Do you condemn Hamas? The internet, they have been, oh my God. But anytime you want to call them out of their, what they're doing, which is a hundred times worse, they want to fire you. They want to blacklist you. They want to end your career. That's what narcissistic sociopaths do. Crazy. Palestinian people can be queer. Queer Palestinians exist. I figured I'd start by saying that because the amount of comments and DMs I've received saying, why do you support Palestine? They wouldn't support you. They wouldn't accept you because you're gay. And a whole bunch of other homophobic and transphobic things. It's almost like they forgot that there are queer people in Palestine. One of my mutuals said it best. I'm going to tag him below. The fight for liberation is unconditional. It doesn't exclude queer Palestinians. So if you're getting online talking about hashtag free Palestine and you're actively homophobic and transphobic, you are not advocating for and supporting all Palestinian people. You can't pick and choose which Palestinians you support and which you don't, which ones you feel deserve to live and which you don't. So if you're gonna stand for Palestine, stand for all of Palestine. The last video I posted is a duet of one of my mutuals reading from this website called Queering the Map, highlighting and amplifying the voices of queer Palestinians. And I feel like we should continue doing that because there's a lot. Please correct me in the comments if I mispronounce any of the names mentioned in any of these stories. The place where you died. Even though we were only pen pals, I love you to my core. Five years of the best friendship. Ahmad died of the airstrike. You died of heartbreak. Khalid, I love you. I love the way you came out to me, how you came out to you, how you introduced Ahmad as your boyfriend. I wanted to share your hurts with me, but we're seas apart. I'll free Palestine just for your eyes. I hope you rest well in heaven. Kiss Ahmad all you want and be very happy. In this life or another, I'll follow you and we can unite. I love you to Icarus and beyond. This is where I first fell for you. It was 2021, the last major Israeli bombardment on Gaza. You never knew you were the reason I first listened to my favorite bands or watched Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Everything comes back to you. Now you're a student abroad and Israeli occupation bombs may take everyone and everything you ever loved away. Your mom, your home, your memories. I am so sorry the world failed you. That your mom, sister, best friends, everything is lost in this genocide. A gay Palestinian man in Gaza, hated by people for being gay and hated by the Israelis for being Palestinian, I am so lost and alone. It always felt like I would have to give up parts of my identity to exist and that I would never be accepted by anyone. But I know and I have realized that I have to stay strong to fight for my rights, not only as a gay person here, but as a gay Palestinian person. I will choose parts of my identity. I have found peace within myself and now I've realized that I have to be strong. Free Palestine, LGBTQIA plus rights for everyone, everywhere. Be strong, everyone. Don't give up. If you feel like there's not much you can do for Palestine, then you're actually wrong. And you've done more for Palestine just by watching this video than you've realised. Did you know that by you just watching this video, you've actually donated to Palestine? Now, let me explain. And if you've seen my previous video, you'll already know what I'm on about. But I'm part of TikTok's creativity programme, which means that they pay me for views. The video has to be a minute long and you have to watch it for at least five seconds but you've already done that but there is one catch though your view no matter how many times you watch this video will only count once 
So the only way that you can actually raise as much money for Palestine just by watching this video is by sharing it to other people so that their view also counts. I work in social media marketing so the way that you can actually help boost this video is by commenting, saving and sharing. The most important one is saving and sharing. Also if you have a platform please duet this, please stitch this. There are a few other creators that are also doing this and I'll try and tag them below so please go and watch their videos as well. But you have actually just done something for Palestine without you even realising. This is the video. This is the video that you're going to send to your friends, to your family, to your coworkers, anyone who said, oh, I didn't know there was a boycott going on. Well, now you do. Because no more excuses of, oh, I didn't know a boycott was going on. I didn't know. Okay. If you got sent this video, then no more excuses. I'm going to explain the different big boycotts going on. Starbucks is currently suing their workers union, who they already treat like shit, suing them because the workers union is pro-Palestine. Imagine that. They clearly have showed where they stand. So how do you help out Palestine and support the boycott? Don't go to fucking Starbucks. If you're in an area with a cafe called Phil's Coffee, that's a way better option because guess what? They actually don't hate queer people. And guess what? They're owned by Palestinians. Next up is McDonald's. Now, guess what McDonald's did? They're giving free meals to the IDF, you know, because the people who are unaliving children are so hungry and need their support. So how do you help out Palestine and boycott McDonald's? Stop going to fucking McDonald's. It's that simple. And the third one is Disney. Yep, that means Disney Plus and Disney World. Yeah, and Marvel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Disney pledged $2 million to Israel as if American taxpayer dollars weren't already funding the unaliving of children already. So how do you boycott? Cancel those Disney Plus subscriptions. And if you already have a Disney Plus subscription and you bought it for like a year or something, just don't renew it. It's that fucking simple. Oh, but Tony, I want to go to Disney World. You're a fucking adult. Go to Six Flags. Also, I don't think anyone fucking wears Puma anymore, but Puma also sponsors Israeli's national soccer team. So I know you guys weren't planning on it, but just don't fucking buy Puma. And then there's HP, the computer software company, whatever the fuck company is. Who the fuck is buying HP? Just don't fucking buy HP. They're the ones that provide Israel with the software to spy on Palestinians. The people in these Palestinian-led coalitions are not telling you to boycott every single company that funds Israel because there's just too many. I'm going to show you an example. This is from the BDS website. So do you see how all these people are boycotting different companies? It doesn't really have that much impact because there's no unity in it. But if a bunch of people are unified in boycotting specific, like a small number of companies, then they're going to feel that pressure even more. And I'll also put a list of other companies that are being asked to boycott as well. The list is not that long. It's really not that fucking hard to do. So now that you've been shared this video or sent this video, my question is, are you still going to pretend that you don't know there's a boycott going on? Because no more fucking excuses. I'm going to give you two pieces of information that are completely unrelated to each other. And I want you to do with them what you wish. There have been tens of thousands of people in every major city protesting what's happening in Palestine. But today in London, we had 500,000 people. 500,000 people. Everyone in the world is upset by this. And everyone has been moved to action. All right, now second piece of information. Did you guys know that the insurrection that happened on January 6th, there was only, it was less than 1,000 people there. Interesting, right? These are two unrelated topics, but I want you to do with that information what you want. This Palestine shit has really been an information overload, fam. I feel like I... September 29th, 1979, James Baldwin appeared in this magazine called The Nation. He wrote, Jews and Palestinians know of broken promises. And I quote, 
But the state of Israel was not created for the salvation of the Jews. It was created for the salvation of the Western interests. This is what is becoming clear. The Palestinians have been paying for the British colonial policy of divide and rule and for Europe's guilty Christian conscience for more than 30 years. Obviously, if he was still alive today, it would be more nuanced than what just Western interests. But this was said in 1979. That statement is exactly why James Baldwin warned us about the white liberal because y'all see how these Democrats is pro-genocide. I be telling y'all, two cheeks to the same donkey's ass. Fuck a two-party system, get rid of that shit. Malcolm X was also one of the only African-American leaders at the time that spoke up about what was going on in Palestine and he was trying to warn us about it. He was also one of the only black leaders to take a stance against the Vietnam War at that time as well. This two-party system is very rigged and leaves no room for moral courage. This is why your politicians are folding right now. This is why your politicians say they're okay with innocent women, children, and men dying for absolutely no reason. You think about it, you trying to paint this shit as a war and you have one side with absolutely no resources, no weapons to fight back, they're literally throwing stones at these idf soldiers and the other side is dropping bombs like they playing fucking bomberman that's why when they told lebron to shut up and dribble monkey i'm with him white power because why is it a picture of you looking at a malcolm x book and you don't understand the words this motherfucker is saying that man literally said the zionist argument to justify israel's occupation of arab palestinians has no legal or intelligent basis in history democracy is a hypocrisy so for me, when I hear the phrase, Palestine will be free from the river to the sea, it's a love letter. It's a love letter Palestinians have for their, their, their people, their culture, and their land. And it's a reminder, remembrance to them that there was a time before this brutality, this, this brutal occupation that's completely twisting time and space and history for the Israeli state. From the river to the sea are the natural boundaries of a state that was there long before Israel stole a flag and put it on a land that was not theirs, but then somehow said that primordial it was because of some type of prophecy. Yet the way they had to do it is through such brutality that when they hear from the river to the sea, there's an automatically an assumption that that means Palestinians not only want their land back, but they want to remove the Israelis in the same way that the Israelis came in and removed Palestinians. What makes you believe that? Like, really, what does the, where does that come from? And don't talk to me about Hamas, right? Because that is the kind of scapegoat y'all use to skirt around a brutal history of subjugation and occupation that removed Palestinians from the ability to have access to the river and the sea. And the fact that you're so scared that they'll do to you what you've done to them shows that you know what you're doing is wrong in one way, shape, or form. You know this brutality is so dehumanizing and so uncalled for, but because you don't want to face the fact that you had to dehumanize yourself in order to be able to sit on those hills and watch as they drop bombs on people shows just how much you've removed yourself from your own personhood. In order to what? Fulfill a prophecy from a God? Who could God are you praying to then? What is this God? This bloodthirsty fiend that tells you that you have a divine right to go in and take other people's humanity, their lives, and their land, and then justify it. It's the same thing in the U.S. when we talk about land back and people are like, well, does that mean natives are going to get rid of us? Who said that? Yo, the, this kind of embedded idea of the, to be human means to be violent is so wrong. Just because the European only knew violence and then exported it around the world, does that make it a universal fact of humanity? We see it in the archaeological record over and over again of populations through time and space who have taken care of the disabled, taken care of the sick, taken care of their dead because of the care they did to lay their people down and rest so that there was always a remembrance of where we come from and who we are. This is why it's so awful that they're not even allowed to bury their dead. But when you have no respect for life, you have no respect for death, therefore no respect for life. So may Palestine be free from the river to the sea. I am not going to be congratulatory or happy for the fact that Israel and Genocide Joe finally allowed humanitarian aid trucks to come into Gaza. 20 trucks for 2 million people? Let's just take a step back real quick. Before the cutoff of their water, their electricity, and their fuel, they relied on humanitarian aid on a daily basis. Do you know how many trucks would enter Gaza on a daily basis? 500. 20 is not enough. 
20 doesn't even meet the basic requirements. Thousands of lives have been taken since the 7th. The number is not going to stop going up. Do not let them fool you into thinking that 20 trucks is enough. Keep spreading the message. Keep talking. Make people see what's happening in Palestine. If you've been reading Gaza stories and watching their videos, you'd know that they're begging us to see them. What's up, y'all? It's Aaliyah's Interlude, and today I am spreading awareness about the genocide that is literally happening right before our eyes in Palestine, Haiti, Sudan, and Congo. As someone with a huge platform like me, I feel like the best answer is always to spread awareness and also to let you guys know that what is happening around the world is not okay at all. I am in full support of a ceasefire in Gaza, and I also want to say free Palestine from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. And as an African woman, the things that are happening in Congo and Sudan are extremely disheartening because my people are literally being murdered every single day links to aid will be linked in my bio so that you guys can support if you have the funds to do so and if you do not spreading awareness is the least that you could do also thank you guys so much for pointing out that there are a list of brands that we are currently boycotting in order to support gaza i had no idea about this but i am so glad that you brought it to my attention bye guys i'm gonna try to make this video without getting upset but we are witnessing a genocide of thousands of people and we have a president that is not only enabling it, but is perpetuating it by intentionally spreading misinformation, trying to confuse the masses, trying to create this narrative that it is a battle war between both sides. What's, uh, we don't know what's going on. No, it's a genocide. And then we finally get our voice. We show that we are more powerful than the media. We show that we are more powerful than their rhetoric and their propaganda. And we say, we're not going to vote for you, Joe Biden, in this next election. Do a ceasefire right now. And for some of you guys to selfishly come in my comments and post videos saying, guys, well, we can't just let Trump win. We can't let a Christian nationalist win. I guess we have to just let this genocide happen. I guess we have to show that we're, we're going to, you know, accept what happens no matter what. Do you guys think this is going to be pretty? Do you guys think that changing a society is easy? I need some of you guys to stop falling for that same propaganda that we have been working against. Do you think it's a coincidence that a bunch of people are now commenting, but what about Project 2025? I don't know if I was the sitting president and I know a bunch of TikTokers are doing an active campaign against me. I'm gonna get my team on TikTok because we already know they have a team on TikTok. I'm gonna get my team on TikTok to go into the comments and say, but guys, what about this? Guys, what about that? And cause fear and miscommunication to confuse the masses. I don't know. It's not like we just saw it happen with Palestine. And what some of y'all don't realize, even if Project 2025 is a real threat, what you're saying is, mm, I guess we can let the Palestinian people be killed off for our benefit. If you get on this internet and say, guys, we need to vote for Joe Biden no matter what, vote blue no matter what, stop talking about Palestine right now. We don't want your help because you don't actually care. Snuck in here, clocking, went through our stuff, clocking, stole the phone, clocking, downloaded a text. I keep seeing a lot of people talking about Palestine and how they feel hopeless and they feel like they have no way to contribute and there's nothing that they can do. And I remember my mutual crutches and spice made a video and they stated that they feel like they're out of their depth when talking about Palestine and then chose to educate us in their area of expertise. And I think that might be one of the biggest problems is everybody is trying to be an expert in an area outside of their depth instead of working with what they have, like crutches and spice. Some of y'all feel like you can't contribute because what you are able to contribute does not measure up to the people that you look up to. Some of y'all go, well, Jasmine, you have a large platform. I don't have a platform like that. I wouldn't have had the platform had y'all not supported me in the first place. There is no role right now that is too small. If all you can do is share and get information out, you're the paper boy. You're the paper girl. You're the paper person. You're the person that's making sure that information does not die. You are making sure that the voices do not get lost in the motherfucking darkness right now. There's not a role too small. If the steering wheel of a car does not work, you can't drive that bitch. But maybe you're the AC. The AC goes out, a bitch gonna get uncomfortable. 
Maybe you're that one little screw that's loose in the chariot and it makes it all wobbly. Sometimes you just have to be one of those moving parts that sets everything else into motion. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. Whenever Israel supporters get on Beyonce's internet talking about some damn, oh, uh, Palestine doesn't care about queer people, Palestine doesn't care about black people, so why are you supporting them, right? Where they try to make it seem like Israel is just this fucking safe haven for queer people and black people, but it, it's like, dog, that shit makes me lose my mind every time I hear it. Because first of all, first of all, can same-sex couples get legally married in Israel right now? Yes or no? Quickly, yes or no, right? So first, so, so like, that. that's fucking first off. But second off, second off, I can't even, I can't even believe that these niggas have the fucking audacity, the, the utmost audacity to even, to even mention black people in their mouths when, when, when they fucking talking about Israel. I can't even believe that shit. Like, don't even, don't even, don't even, you feel what I'm saying? Like, yo, like, y'all's government and what y'all have done to Ethiopian Jewish women, forcibly sterilizing them to stop the growth of their population within Israel on some white purity shit? Like, nah, what, what, what the fuck? And, 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 and these niggas, and these niggas talk about some damn, oh, oh, Palestine doesn't care about black people. You don't care about black people. You don't care about black people. Man, oh my God. Listen, listen, not not even all Jewish people are viewed equal in, in, in fucking Israel. If a black Jewish person came to Israel right now, he'd be, he'd be viewed as a second class citizen. They'd be viewed as a fucking second class citizen right now in Israel. So I don't know what the hell, what, like, 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 that, that is just like, ooh, that, that actually like makes me very upset. The fact that y'all even have, have, have the audacity that like y'all ain't the most anti-black motherfuckers. Like that, like it's just, it's just, it's just, it's actually out of this world to me, out of this fucking world. I've had Zionists literally tell me that because I'm supporting Palestine instead of Israel, I'm on the wrong side of history. Come here, come here, come here, baby. You have the four horsemen of colonialism on your side, including your own. They have never been on the right side of history, ever. You and I. That's not fair. That is not fair. That is not fair. Seventy four is the perfect way. Watch this video for five seconds, and if you want to help the people of Palestine, here are things to do and games to play that don't cost any money. Number one, I know everybody has seen this game. It's been going crazy lately, and the creator of this game intended it to be a donation profit for the people of Palestine. So the more people play, the more it generates, and the more it generates, the more money the Palestinian people get. By the way, if you play this game, you don't have to post it publicly. You can just put it in your private videos, and it was said that it made $6,000 within the first day. That's amazing. This also is a game intended to do the same thing and you don't have to post it publicly. You can put this in your private and help the people of Palestine at the same time. Another way is to watch this video and comment and share as much as possible because the more people see it, the more it generates by itself. And we'll donate whatever it generates. For anybody looking to go above and beyond, you can go to the PCRF on Instagram. It stands for the Palestinian Child Relief Foundation. And this link right here, you can donate to. They were trying to raise 10 million. They are, they're almost there. They're not at 9 million. So there it is, everybody. Go do it. Oh, who in your phone you got named McDonald's? A sneaky link? No, that's actually McDonald's. Yeah, they're not taking the boycotts very well and they've been getting super desperate. Hello? <laughs> You can have my Christmas bonus if you want it. Just please eat at McDonald's. No, fuck y'all. You like Israel so much? Get them to eat them nasty ass burgers. We didn't mean it. Please, I'll give you anything. I'll even come shake some ass. Please. Just ignore it. They're going to keep calling. Two cent sandwiches and a free foot massage. With anyway, see, this is why it's important to organize and come together as a united front. You know, these businesses got mad power, but they don't got nothing on the everyday consumer and general public, no matter what they say. What? Look, the CEO is holding my family hostage. He's gonna kill my parents if you don't come eat here. Well, RIP your mama and them. Oh my God, why is everybody acting like this? It's not my fault y'all funding genocide.
Better start using that money to keep the lights on. Keep acting cocky. If this don't work, our next step is house calls. Please try it. I got a katana with y'all fucking name on it. 7,028 Palestinians. 3,000 of them were children. That is the average population size of a small American town. Just gone. Thank you. If you're going to support a cause or a movement, please don't make it a punchline in your silly little Halloween captions. Like, don't post yourself in a Joker costume and the caption is anyways free Palestine and you don't even post links, no resources, no nothing. Like, it's just you in a tutu. It's just not helping. It's just showing that you're just going along with a quote unquote trend when it's not supposed to be a trend. These are people's lives. Post links, post places where people could donate to. Maybe y'all think I'm reaching, but a lot of people did that back in 2020 with Brianna and it wasn't really helping. That's not a trend, like those are people's lives. Like if you're gonna post about it, make sure you post links, resources, things that can help these people. Like doing that is just doing nothing. And I'm seeing so many influencers do it. Like that's not like, that's not, I, that's not what you think you're doing. Like you didn't eat, you didn't eat. Also for those that wanna share more information, um, on what's going on in Palestine and you're not educated on the topic, now's the time to read and get educated. You can't just joke about things like that, especially with the kids involved. Like, yes, my page is really lighthearted and funny all the time, but sometimes you gotta get serious with that. Out of the one million people that be following me, I know at least one of y'all gonna see this and y'all gonna learn today. I can't sit here and ignore something like that when children are involved. Like, I can't do that. Sorry. You cannot watch what's going on and not stand with Palestine. Like, come on now. It's not that hard to show support, but don't make it as a joke either. Also, if you have a platform and your big announcement is, oh, I'm staying neutral, it's also kind of the problem. And don't just do it because you want to look good and, like, save your brands and all that stuff. Like, people know that you're not being genuine, girl. Also, this is one of the orgs that I'm supporting, the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund. Also, if there's other resources that you guys could recommend, please let me know. Also, I wanted to give a sidebar. Pay attention to your faves on how they address these issues and where they post them. Are they posting them on their biggest platform or the platform where they feel like nobody's going to see it because it does? they don't want it to affect their, you know, their brand deals and stuff like that. I'm just going to put that out there. But anyways, I love you guys, and I will continue to help as much as I can, and please let me know. What if we wrote a book about white people having to stand against oppression and resist oppression? And then in real life, support genocide. Ah, because you know how many losers get on Aang's internet and talk about, keep your politics out of my show. But the whole show be about a survivor of a mass genocide fighting against an imperial nation who's waging war on the entire world. <laughs> And to make it worse, they can see the inherent evils that these characters go through. But in real life, we supporting the Fire Nation? <laughs> like, y'all are missing the entire point. Media is supposed to teach us about real life so we can apply that and grow as human beings. But instead, y'all want to gaslight actual oppressed people in real life while supporting the symbolic representations of those people in media. I think it's because we honestly believe this is us, but this is actually America. Like, not even a joke. We think that this is us, but the whole time we really be the motherfucking empire. <laughs> We really think America is this, but in actuality, we are the fucking world government. Like, why y'all think they had a straw hat hat at a Palestinian protest? This is not an accident. Y'all gotta wake up. Would you like to see some Israeli propaganda? Let's watch. Oh my God, there's an attack. Selfie mode. <laughs> That's literally what they do. Like, these people don't know what the horrors of war are because literally they're smiling in the background. You can see them laughing, getting ready, taking selfies. Oh my God, pray for Israel. We're getting attacked here. They know they're so safe that they're smiling and laughing. If you look at Gaza, people are screaming and running and dying on their bodies everywhere in the street. And yet, some people have the audacity to say, Israel, Israel, pray for Israel. Pray, pray for Gaza, who have 7,000 people who have been killed. 2,500 plus of them are children. Entire large family, generational families wiped off the Gaza registry. The list, and it, the funny part is they, they published the list with the IDs that the Israeli government have access to of everyone that passed away by age, by name, by gender, the day they died, where their bodies were registered. And this is only including people that were found and they were able to, they were able to be identified. Allahu <laughs> 
lot of people have been saying that they have an off feeling about these filters because they don't know if the money is going to Falestine, and it's not. But it's not necessarily for the reasons that you think. People are under the impression that the creators who are making these filters will just pocket the money. And I can't speak on that, but what I can speak on is the fact that aid is not being let into Hassa. Multiple Palestinian people have come on and spoken about that. And while these filters are well-intentioned, the impact that they're having is very similar to that of the black squares posted in 2020 for Black Lives Matter. While it was initially intended to show solidarity with black people in America, the impact that it ended up having was flooding the timelines and making it difficult to find protests, educational resources, and actions that could be taken. Does that sound familiar? Because it should. At this point, you've probably seen hundreds of filters using this video. In fact, there have been multiple filters with millions of videos that have been created. And again, while all of these videos are well-intentioned, the unfortunate side effect is resources and information have now become scarce on this app. You can go through hundreds of videos about Palestine and not get a single piece of information for what's happening on the ground. So now that we know not to use the filter and that money isn't being let into Hassa, what are the things that you can do to help? Well, you can start off by checking out the BDS National Committee. They have a centralized boycott list that includes around 20 companies, and it's really easy to avoid those companies. They also have other actions that you can take, such as pressuring companies involved on the non-boycott list. The next thing that you can do is amplify the resources of people on the ground, such as journalists. Motaz, Plestia, and Bassan are three of the resources that you can find that are on the ground reporting daily. The third action that you can take, which is pretty obvious and you've probably already done, is go to protest and reach out to your representatives. Ask them for a ceasefire, ask them to stop funding Israel, and demand that they stand alongside Palestinian people. How many cups of coffee is a human life worth? And this is specifically to the people who are still buying the Starbucks drinks and even making those TikTok videos trying those drinks, even though we're doing a boycott standing in solidarity with Palestine who's going through a genocide. So I ask you, how many cups of coffee is a human life worth? I'll wait. And I want you to do me a favor. Next time you get that drink from Starbucks, I want you to look right into the rearview mirror, right into your eyes, and I want you to tell yourself, I thought this cup of coffee or your matcha latte was more important than standing in solidarity against the genocide. Have a great night. If you're someone that supports Palestine and wants to provide aid but doesn't have the financial means to do so, I'm begging you to just please keep watching this video. As a content creator, I'm a part of the creativity program beta on TikTok. So basically, anytime I have a video that's over a minute long and it does well, I get money for it. I saw quite a few other people do this and I think it's a great idea for just people who want to support but don't have the money to do so. Just watch this video. Very easy. Something that you would be doing anyway. Take like a minute and two seconds out of your life to just watch this video. But I have noticed a lot of things regarding Palestine also get kind of censored right now. So if you can share it, if you don't even want to share it to anybody, you can like literally share copy link, like literally anything. Leave a comment, reply to somebody else's comment, just something so that it's boosting the algorithm. My average is somewhere between 60 to 70 cents per 1,000 views. So like literally... The more views, the better, the more money I can donate. I previously donated to Urgent Relief for Gaza's Children, so I would do that again. Unless you guys have other ideas, just leave them in the comments and I can always look into those. We can split the money, whatever. Basically, lots of people really need our help and if it's so easy to just sit here and watch a video. You can literally put it on two times speed too, so that you can only have to watch 31 seconds. 31 seconds and boom, money donated. So please copy link, share whatever, share with a friend, repost, whatever. Bye! Remember kids, the next time that somebody tells you the government wouldn't do that, oh yes they would. على ارض تلاقيني انا لهلي انا فديهم انا دمي فلسطيني فلسطيني فلسطيني